Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. If you can't listen to the Liberty Radio Network's internet streams, free satellite channel, or radio affiliates, no worries. You can listen to LRN.FM from any phone, anywhere. Add this number to your phone. 213-493-0309. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Liberty Radio Network listen lines are locked into our stream 24 hours a day. Call 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. Are you looking for camping, hunting, survival, or shooting gear? ManVentureOutpost.com carries the name brands you want at the lowest prices. Ammunition, knives, firearm accessories, archery, air guns, scopes, binoculars, laser sights, tactical flashlights, fish finders, and boating equipment. ManVentureOutpost.com is family owned and has the lowest prices. Go check it for yourself. Get it quick. Get it from ManVentureOutpost.com. Now buy firearms at ManVentureOutpost.com. Lock it here for more live content. Free Talk Live is next on the Liberty Radio Network. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Radio VR. Good morning and welcome to Radio VR. We're broadcasting live from Washington, D.C. and around the world on voiceofrussia.com slash U.S. I'm Kate Zickel. And I'm Rick Young. Today is Friday, May 30th, 2014. Radio VR News. President Obama has quietly hosted Hillary Clinton for lunch on Thursday. Big question is, why? White House correspondent Mark Smith reports. The former Secretary of State slipped into the White House unannounced, and though the president's aides confirmed the lunch happened, they won't discuss it. In fact, since it wasn't on Obama's public schedule, the only reason we know about it is because Clinton had an interview with People magazine about her upcoming book, Hard Choices, and the magazine tweeted about it. As to what actually transpired between the current president and his party's top candidate to be the next, the best that can be said is, oh, to be a fly on the wall. Mark Smith at the White House. Police in California say they knew about threatening videos during a welfare check on the young man who later killed six people. Ed Donahue has more on the man involved in the Santa Barbara killing spree. The Santa Barbara County Sheriff's Department now says deputies who checked on Elliot Roger were aware he posted some disturbing videos, but they never looked at them before or after it was determined Roger was not a threat to himself or others. The department also revealed Roger uploaded the final video titled Day of Retribution at 9.17 p.m. on the day of the attacks. One minute later, he emailed a lengthy manifesto detailing his plans. The first gunshots were fired 10 minutes later. Eight minutes after that, Elliot Roger was dead. I'm Ed Donahue. Donald Sterling's days of owning the L.A. Clippers could be over. Sources say the NBA franchise is close to being sold for a record amount. Correspondent Mike Myers has more on the potential buyer. The L.A. Clippers are reportedly being sold for a record $2 billion. Steve Ballmar, the former CEO of Microsoft, who has an estimated net worth of $20 billion, won a frenetic bidding war for ownership of the team. The sale price is nearly four times the highest previous price paid for an NBA franchise. Donald Sterling was forced to sell the Clippers after he was banned for life by the NBA recently for making racist comments in a secret audio recording. The prospective deal is expected to get the approval of the 29 other NBA owners during a June 3rd hearing. Mark Myers, Los Angeles. Google's workforce is mostly made up of white men, according to diversity data from the tech giant, but the company says that's something it wants to change. Sandy Kozell has the details. Under growing pressure on the tech industry to hire more minorities and women, Google has released statistics documenting the diversity of its workforce. The numbers show 70% of the people working at the search giant are men. 61% of the workers are white. In a blog, Google's senior vice president says, simply put, the company is not where it wants to be when it comes to diversity. I'm Sandy Kozell. Car crashes across the country don't just drive up insurance rates, they also cost the economy a bundle. 
Correspondent Diane Kepley reports on the price of automobile accidents. The economic impact from the crashes amounted to more than $870 billion in 2010 and was the equivalent of nearly 2% of the country's gross domestic product. Among the factors that weigh in are lost productivity, property damage, and the cost of medical and rehabilitation treatment and costs to employers. The way people act also plays a role, with speeding, alcohol use, and distracted driving accounting for more than half the cost. Transportation Secretary Anthony Fox is expected to use the results of the study to press for larger fines for recall violations to keep automakers from concealing safety defects. Diane Kepley, Washington. Two boys have been declared co-champions of the National Spelling Bee for the first time in 52 years. Violet Economova has the story. It didn't look good for 14-year-old Sriram Hathbar in round 16 of the finals. K-O-R-B-R-U-I-T-E-R, Corbuter. But because Sri Ram was the first speller, his opponent Anson Sujo had to get his word right to win. Anson did not, and the pair went back and forth for about a dozen more rounds until the word list ran out and they were named co-champions. The competition was against the dictionary, not against each other. Uh, I'm happy to share this trophy with him. That audio of Sri Ram, courtesy of ESPN. I'm Violet Ekonomova. And that's the news for Radio VR in Washington. I'm Kate Ziggel. And I'm Rick Young. The latest news from around the world. We are Radio VR in Washington. Millions of Americans are irrationally feared dead following a train derailment near Wilmington, Delaware. Less than 200 people were aboard the train, but because no names have been released yet, countless more are being imagined trapped inside the wreckage by worried parents and overly anxious friends. And the list of imagined victims is growing by the minute. From brothers-in-law who live in Delaware, who usually drive but could possibly have been on that train, to friends who went to Delaware on a business trip and may have been next to the tracks for some reason when the train derailed. And sadly, we're getting reports that even those who have never been to Delaware are now also among those irrationally thought killed. Oh, and we are just now getting word from Homeland Security that they're now warning people their fears may spiral into a wholly new fear that their loved ones never existed at all and are just byproducts of a drug-induced lucid dream in which their consciousness is currently imprisoned. Such a shame since this is reality. There is nothing beyond this to believe otherwise. It would be folly. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Sunday night show. Yes, we are live. It's Sunday evening. And not only that, but we're doing a show where you can call in and bring up anything that's on your mind. The number to do that, if you want to talk to us tonight, is 855-450-3733. That's 855-450-FREE, the word free. And of course, we are Free Talk Live. And we tonight is me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. Now coming up... I want to just launch right into the content here. Mark, you had an unbelievable story. This is just just a warning for folks listening. Um, at least I think this is going to be kind of a depressing story. It's disturbing, so, there's no doubt. Well, actually, you know, scratch that because we do actually have a call on the line to start the show out. So let's just go right to the phones because that's what Free Talk Live is about. Let's talk to Ty. Hi, Ty. You're on Free Talk Live. Hi, boy. That was that was really fast. I hardly had a, had a chance to get ready. Hey, um... <laughs> I just wanted to talk a little bit more about something I called in about on uh, Friday, and I ran into a bit of a roadblock because I couldn't get a single one of the three co-hosts to even agree that there's such a thing as objective reality. Oh, which, I heard, oh, yeah, I heard, we heard your this. call, Ty. Yeah. Now, can you just recap real quick for the people who are who maybe didn't hear the show? Free Talk like Live me. is on every single night of the week, uh, but... People listening on Sunday may not have heard Friday's show. People on this show um, right now may not have heard Friday's show, like me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I was I was just discussing some ideas about consciousness and awareness, and the difference between uh, objectivity, subjectivity, you know, experience, and uh, ran it. Like I said, I ran into a little bit of a roadblock because nobody would even agree that there is such a thing as objectivity. It that, seemed to be that uh, it may be all in our imagination that there may be some sort of a 
programmer that we're in some sort of a simulation or whatnot, you know? All those yeah, things I... may be true, but the simulation has objective reality, right? I mean, I think it's nonsense because everybody pretty much lives their lives as though there is reality that exists outside of their perception. Like, we don't walk around thinking that we're just going to fall into a hole in the ground that we can't see or fly off the edge of a cliff. You right, know, we're, we, not, we're not right, science fiction writers here, um, so we can all sit down and agree, you know, that the thing we're stepping on is the ground, the thing we're sitting at is a table, <laughs> um, that the, you know, the objects we're sitting on are chairs. Like, these, uh, I, I find the... I really wonder why, like, I mean, okay, okay like, the, the other hosts that were on on Friday night are people that I like and respect but I just it's really hard for me to see why somebody would not believe that there's an I wonder why the reality. hell they don't look why they look both ways when they cross the street yeah I mean if, <laughs> if we're not talking about objective reality here don't worry about the truck exactly you know I just wanted to kind of go over real quick if it's okay some of my ideas because I think there's a lot of confusion out there about objective reality subjective experience and the I, another common idea that i think is a little bit fallacious this idea that perception is reality oh yeah that i think that's fallacious too our own, i'm we I, we I can't wait to hear what reality. you have to say go ahead <laughs> okay. this is kind of like an elevator speech i've been working on all day it's about a, about Lay a minute and a half us. let me see how it goes here uh objectivity or reality is what is it is universally valid whether it is acknowledged or not Mm -hmm. Subjectivity is the individuated experience of reality. Reality is universal and impersonal, while experience is individual and very personal. Reality is valid by definition, while experience is valid if and only if it corresponds with reality. And works. <laughs> yeah. yeah now, I, now, I agree with you. Well, the, I would. The perception is reality thing is often used in sort of an advertising context, and in that case, oh, I, I I believe there are people who absolutely believe that, especially if they've done a lot of drugs. And now, well, like I, okay, let me uh, if it's okay, let me continue on yeah, here because this this gets into the perception part. Now, I want to talk about edges. An edge is a place where interactions happen between two related but different things. The edge between reality and experience is an imaginal place called perception. It's where our waking consciousness lives. I say imaginal and not imaginary, because the imaginary is something realistic but not real, while the imaginal is a mental representation of something real or something wish, we wish to make real. All right, you lost we, me. <laughs> Sorry, Ty. I, I, it's well, just, it's it, getting a little abstract. <laughs> your, uh, your thoughts, see, it's hard to say what, what is internal and what's external? Do you see the world or, or are you forming an, an image in your mind of what the world is? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you, when, you, when you think about Brian, you form an image in your mind of, that represents Brian. It's symbolic of Brian. Mm -hmm. Same thing with language. Language is a symbol of meaning. That's what I'm talking about as far as imaginal. Okay. Now... What this comes down to is that we are, we are causal agents in this perceptual edge between reality and experience because our actions affect reality. Perception allows us to be creative participants in reality. Now, I think that's where people get confused and say perception is reality. Perception is just that area of interaction between what is real and our subjective experience of what is real and what we want to create in the world. So what's the usefulness of this information, I guess, is what I always um, ask myself, because I usually shut down in these conversations. If I can't, yeah, get, my, the point? If I I mean... can't get my point across in 45 seconds, it's like I've had, I'm, I'm done um, having the, the conversation because it's like, why, why are we talking about this again? You're, you're going to leave this and you're going to expect when you take a step forward that the floor is going to be there and that you're not going to step off of a cliff that you didn't see. Well, so like, why? I, why? I, I think this is important important to talk about because there's a lot of people who think that what they think is their reality you know becomes the reality like as in it becomes the universe not that right, that's what they're thinking that in their mind. Like yes because otherwise you're creating victimhood okay with people that's if true. if you don't 
uh, if people think that what they think is is what's out there and it's not objective but it's subjective, then they think that they are bringing upon themselves, say, bad things or whatever, and that is absolute nonsense. No, guess what? Bad things will happen to you whether no matter what you're thinking, okay? And so so it can create, I think, that this, this message of you create your reality, not in that you affect that people, your reality, but as in you blamed. literally, like a god, create your reality, can create a very, very serious issue a, a case of victimhood a case of a, a lack of not pe- empowerment but actually being de-empowered are you saying that people blame themselves for bad things that happen if i they- think there's a message being taught out there by people that would effectually cause people to blame themselves for bad things okay ty and, and this uh this ties back to what i was talking about on friday this uh, a, a different kind of transhumanism idea you know the basic transhumanism idea that's popular right now is the idea of robot bodies or enhanced humanity and i think that uh actually what we need what is better is to become fully human and that means to really use our faculties and to understand the nature of reality the nature of subjective experience and how we interact with reality in in this perceptual construct because that perceptual area is where technology and art exists it's where we create things that is our creative area for living within the world does that make sense yeah i think i can understand what you're uh, getting at ty but you know we actually have a call on the phone lines this is a person who wants to talk to you they have they said they have a question for you so i'm not sure how this is going to work we'll try it oh he just dropped off so sorry it was uh (laughs) it was james in arizona he said he had a question for you but he dropped off so Anyway, uh, is there anything else you wanted to say about this, Ty? Well, there's there's more I'd like to add eventually, but it's it's too much to really go into on a short call. You know, I'd like to get back into this how how it goes into spirituality and religion. I think that spirituality is a very good thing, uh, but I think that you have to keep yourself grounded because we are a threefold conscious being. We have a a mind, we have a heart, the emotional part, and and we have a body. And all three of those are necessary to be who we are. If you lose your body, you are no longer you. You know? You're you're technically yeah, that's, dead. Okay, and, and that's really interesting because whether there's consciousness beyond that. Yeah, because now people are talking about what if you could um, upload your consciousness to the internet or to a robot body, you'd no longer have a physical body, so would would that affect your consciousness? Would you no longer be you? I would say yes. Thanks, Ty, for the call tonight. This is Free Talk Live. 855-450-3733 is the number to call if you've got something on your mind. You know Lumber Liquidators for having the best selection of flooring at the lowest prices. And right now, you can buy one floor and get 50% off another on their thickest and best dream home laminates. No games, no gimmicks, just huge savings off already ridiculously low prices. Plus, get great deals on pre-finished hardwood and morning star bamboo. So go to LumberLiquidators.com to find the store nearest you. Special financing is available. But hurry, this buy one, get one sale ends Tuesday, June 3rd. Hi, everyone. I'm Chuck Woolery. After putting a few thousand couples together on Love Connection, you know that nothing kills romance faster than bad breath. Smart Mouth gets at the cause of bad breath without the burn, and you get clean breath for about 12 hours. Other mouthwashes only prevent bad breath for about an hour. Gum and mints, well, they just cover it up. Use Smart Mouth in the morning for great breath all day. Rinse in the evening for clean, kissable breath all night. You can even wake up without morning breath. Smart Mouth, for 12 hours of real clean breath, Look for the green box at your favorite store. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leading them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. 
What if you could combine the two most powerful diet ingredients into one incredible weight loss super pill? We've done just that. For the first time ever, the miracle fat burner in a bottle, Raspberry Ketone, has been combined with pure Garcinia Cambogia, described as the holy grail of weight loss, to bring you the world's most powerful diet pill. Get your phone ready, because we're releasing free bottles to the first 100 callers. But wait, we haven't just combined the two most powerful weight loss ingredients. We've combined the six most powerful ingredients. Green coffee bean, African mango, moringa, and glucomonin. All the hottest clinically proven weight loss ingredients combined into one fat shedding super pill. We call it the Skinny Six Super Supplement, and it's available for the very first time. Be one of the first 100 callers and we'll rush you a free bottle. Call 1 800 514 2945. Find out how to get your free bottle. 1 800 514 2945. 1 800 514 2945. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. MindThings.com is a fun online game that pits you against people around the world to mine for scarce resources. Do business in a capitalist economy with virtually mined gold, tax-free. It doesn't require a big-time commitment. Your little mining robot guy works whether you're logged in or not. It costs nothing to play, but you can buy bonuses. They even accept bitcoins. Go to MindThings.com, use coupon code FTL, and double your mining speed. It's free. MindThings. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you're listening to the live Sunday night show with me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. Free Talk Live is a show where you can call about anything at 855-450-3733. We were going to talk about baby grenades, Mark, apparently, but uh, we had a call from Ty about an abstract uh, subject of, I mean, it wasn't really abstract. It Just sometimes those discussions about the nature of reality and stuff can seem a little bit abstract and sometimes they tend to lose people. So I didn't want to go on too, too, too long with it. Uh, but you know, I think he wanted to get a different perspective because the three of us don't normally host the show every night. We're only here on the Sunday night show. And by the way, if you want to hear the rest of the seven nights per week of free talk live, you can just head over to archives.freetalklive.com here every almost every episode of Free Talk Live that's ever been made going back at least to 2006 and uh, check it out for yourself. But normally we have a different crew here on the rest of the nights. Yeah, and Ian, um, the main host, of the you know, the first chair of the, um, of the show, he and I have sort of switched positions on this over the years. I used to be in the, the past, the sort of new agey guy. I went to a uh, church. Were you a snag? I don't know what that means. A, sa- a snag is a sensitive new age guy. I don't know. I, I don't think I was ever sensitive. Yeah, right? I was going to say, I could never see him being sensitive. <laughs> no. That's like the guy in the yoga class who gets all the chicks. Yeah. But it works. I can tell you that. <laughs> it works. It's, it's, a, it's a system that works. <laughs> um, uh, no, I mean, you know, what it was, is it was an opportunity for me to, uh, to, to, to look at and name sort of reality in a way that uh, made sense to me at the time. And... One thing that's very strange is I took some classes. Now, this uh, particular so- sort of new age stuff that I did was called New Thought. Anybody can look it up and find out what it's all about. But new Oh, thought. the New Thought movement. Yeah. Okay, it's so this has been around since early 19th, 19th century. I've never heard yeah. of it. Exactly right. Yeah. And so the idea is, is that you're... Ralph Waldo Emerson, yep. uh, Wallace Waddles. You oh. you are a piece of God. You have the powers of God. You claim those powers for yourself. You make think you make the reality the way you wish it to be. Well, isn't that a nice story? It's an interesting story. <laughs> um, the interesting part about this is that everything I tried with it, you know, sort of claimed for myself, worked. 
Now, that doesn't that isn't proof what, of anything. What do you like? Give me an example. Mo- monetary stuff. I mean, what do you think I asked for? I, I, you know, <laughs> like, well, we're talking just... about Mark Edge here. Yeah. I asked for, for booty. I didn't ask for booty because I didn't need to. But and, and, you know, like, and money. I mean, Part of is, this is like imagining that you know, okay, when you get to the mall, the parking spot you want will be there, and so you just envision that yes, that parking spot will be there. And when you get there, holy cow, it's there. Yeah, you know. And that, that, cert, that example was used on multiple occasions. Well, I, sure. I, I'm I th- much more interested in, you know, like I want a month where I make. And at the time. I uh, think if you're invested in that, you can trick yourself into believing that, oh, yeah, that was the part. And what's that's wrong the- with that? <laughs> <laughs> right? So this is, A, that's my point, right? Like, so, okay, <laughs> so I've tricked myself into making more money this month. Awesome. <laughs> Let's trick myself well, into making more next month. No, you've tricked yourself into believing that you made yourself, that you imbued yourself with the godlike power of getting more money. You know uh-huh. what I mean? Well, well I, I I don't care what the reason is, is that I got yeah, more sure, money. Yeah, sure, you made yeah. more money. Good for you, right? You know, I, I explored this, the New Thought Movement, and I read quite a bit of the works. Uh, Thomas White, I think, is another popular one. There's there's quite a few, and a lot of modern people with The Secret and all that. And the part where it really just all fell, where, where I thought that it fell apart, fell apart completely, was in that, the you know, the instant that any, so you essentially create everything that's in front of you, you, you know, all of it. And so if... If the person that doesn't understand what air is, doesn't understand, and, and we have a history of people that didn't, you know, because science didn't understand oxygen until relatively recently. You have people today that still have no idea. Go to, you know, go to, uh, go to Brazil, you know, go to, Arge- go to somewhere in South America. You're going to find plenty of tribes that have no idea what oxygen is, but somehow they breathe. You know, so to say that you, something only exists because you're aware of it, because these same people will tell you that, oh, yeah, the Native Americans didn't see boats off the shore. You know, because they mm-hmm. didn't know what a boat was, so they couldn't possibly see it. Now, you know, I, and I sat there in more than one of these uh, classes and services and said, "Well, that's BS." Um, right, yeah, yeah. You know, so, <laughs> You know, the, my, the understanding that I came up with was is that, you know, the sort of positive things um, that I, you know, thought of would work. But obviously the rain, I love the Bible verse, the rain falls on the just and the unjust. Right. Come on. <laughs> we know the rain falls on the just and the unjust. Mm-hmm. And that if you don't, if you walk out into the is street. That like say, is that almost like an Ayn Rand thing? Like you can just. Ass- you can evade reality, but you can't evade the consequences yeah. of reality. Yeah, it's, it's very much saying existence exists. And the, um, you know, so. I, what I thought is is that surprises always come along, but that you might be able to change reality in some way or another, that you're a godlike being having a human experience or whatever that nonsense is. And I think that that has worked for me in my life in different ways, but it's morphed over time. And now I have pretty much everything I've ever wanted. I've got you know a job that pays me enough money for me to be reasonably happy. My car isn't breaking down all the time. I have a you know wonderful wife and a, a great child, and you know so I get I've gotten much more skeptical about about the uh, these things and their ability to deliver. When yeah. I was desperate for things to work for me, um, you know, I, I cared much more about this stuff. But did you ever like have some? Did you ever experience? Did you ever let yourself admit that you experienced something that wasn't according to what you wanted, and that you ca- caused that? So, for instance, did things ever not go your way, and you didn't rationalize it? You you said, yeah, that I didn't get what I wanted. That must have been my fault. I wasn't directing my godlike energy in the right way, no. or whatever. Um, what I said to myself was, the rain falls on the just and the unjust, and that I just have to, you know, whatever's gone wrong here, I have to cl- climb out of this hole. Yeah, I think most people though that study this stuff do what Stephanie just mentioned. I Maybe. think they think that way. Like, I mean, because that's one of the tenets of what they teach is that, oh, you stub your toe first thing in the morning, your whole day's shot. Because well, suddenly you wake up with pain, and so you're projecting these waves of pain onto the universe, and so your day is going to suck. Any um, religious or uh, spiritual system that requires another person to uh, help you to navigate it is a scam. <laughs> yeah. Okay? It's a yeah. full-on scam. Now, if let, let's consider that any kind of spiritual thought process you have is a lens you have created with which to view the reality. If that lens works for you, by all means, use that lens. If that lens harms you, then you should stop using that lens immediately. If, if you are less happy because of the lens through which you view, if your lens says I, this bad thing occurred to me because of something I did or whatever. In some cases, it's true. What if you like, lose all your money by giving it to a guru or to the church? Or right. This bad Pope. thing has occurred to me. Yeah. <laughs> it's because of your fault. Well, what if you end up in jail? Chances are good, or at least you know that you had some empowering role in ending up in jail, and you are the one that's responsible for that. Nobody else. So. Yeah. I. Oh man. 
I don't know who else out there is like me, but personally, I feel much more comfortable being firmly connected to reality. Like I like to walk around with my feet on the ground and and have and and know that like if I do something, this is going to happen because mm-hmm. there's certain yeah things that exist outside of me and outside of my perception. You well, know, like I, like physics, right? <laughs> no, yeah. I'm not talking about God. I'm talking about physics, right? Yeah, I mean, I think there's some confusing messages out there. First off, I mean, one of the worst things to ever, you know, happen was for Max Planck and others to come up with quantum physics. Uh, That has literally ruined the rational mind of so many people because... I I disagree because, like, their quantum, like, the way that they explain quantum physics is something that probably not everyone has the technical background to understand. I think it's the right, bastardization no of that. that. It's, yeah. the, it's the misinterpretation of what, of their quantum physics. Yeah. I, I just, that, I warn that people to just watch out. As soon as you hear the word quantum, even from a scientist, watch out. <laughs> All right. 855-450-3733. Reality, does it exist? Should I even ask that question? Maybe we should just talk about the baby grenades coming up here on Free Talk Live, the Sunday show. Springtime is save big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long-term customers know spring is the time to stock up at HerbalHealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for spring specials, including our 500 parts per million colloidal silver, all sizes on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, hoodia and metabolic complex, and pro-metabolic, all on sale now. Also, the anti-parasite intestinal freedom and Warwood Plus Complex, plus stevia liquid sweetener and the super enzymes, all on sale for spring at HerbalHealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and click on Spring Specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education since 1988. Herbal Healer Academy. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc, as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas 
of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, the live Sunday night edition with me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. We are really here objectively provable. You can <laughs> even call us and test it for yourself in an experimental hypothesis, yes, empirically <laughs> proving that we're here. Eight Dr. Five, Murphy. 855-450-3733 is our phone number, or you, you can call us on Skype. Our Skype name is lrn.fm. Now, we've been teasing this story for a couple segments now, but we haven't gotten to it because your calls come first, of course. But, Mark, there's been a really tragic uh, instance of police brutality, abuse involving a grenade thrown into a baby's crib in a home raid gone wrong. Can you tell us more about that? So I've read three stories here. And this Um, is depressing, by the way. I just want to give everyone a warning before we start to talk about it. If you don't want to feel sad, you may want to turn off your radio. Yep. Um, and it is, it's a sad And situation. if you turn off the radio, we still talk. <laughs> you know? That's right. <laughs> we are objective. So this happened near Atlanta. Um, it is uh, from, I, the main article is from WSB TV. I have a couple of other articles. Um, you know, things have changed since this occurred. It's been a few days now. Uh, this is a, what happened was at 3 a.m., uh, a SWAT team decided that an individual was in a house. That individual was not in that house. Um, but it didn't it stop them. It wouldn't be the first time they've gotten some information like that wrong. Yeah. It didn't stop them from whipping a stun grenade or flashbang grenade through the window. That flashbang grenade landed in a crib, a portable crib, oh. from a family that had had their house burned down in Wisconsin that was staying with relatives. Oh, no. So the baby uh, in the flashbang grenade, this is the worst part, folks. Talk about wrong place, wrong time. If you can't handle it, stick your fingers in your ears for the next five seconds. That flashbang grenade landed right on the pillow, right in front of that baby's face, and went off. And it completely disfigured this 19-month-old child. Oh. He's uh, in a medically induced coma at this point, oh uh, or at least was uh, upon the writing of this article, uh, paralyzed, and he's just a big mess. So the you know, the paladins of truth and justice are going after, um, you know, I can't. I have not been a- able to ascertain what the reason for this uh, this particular warrant is, but it is a nonviolent crime. So wow. they're going after nonviolent people in With a, a SWAT violent team? way. So, so it's a nonviolent crime and a SWAT team gets called. Always. So, um, you know, the, the guy's... The person they're looking for isn't even in the house. Well, he's, he's, he's on the run and, you know, they thought that they could find him there or whatever. So anyway, this uh, poor child. Now this this flashbang grenade went off and blew the hole out of this portable crib. Um, there's a two foot wide ho- gaping hole in this thing. And I can't even imagine. It how went off. Um, you know what be. it did yeah. to this child. The pictures are terrible. Yeah, I mean a flashbang grenade is supposed to disorient people in a room. But in a look, room. This this still. You know these things still explode, and yeah. so if anything's nearby it, it's going to. You know. There's effects. They set houses on fire with these things sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) And, uh, you know, so this is a, it's a terrible situation. And, uh, you know, I can go into the the specifics here. It's just, it's really upsetting the reaction. What I want to read here is the reaction from reason.com. There's an update to the story of the SWAT team that threw a flashbang grenade um, while executing a no knock warrant that severely burned a 19 month old baby. Habersham County Sheriff Joe, Joey Terrell says the deputies involved are devastated and that they've been called that they've been called baby killers and received threats. All I can say is um, pray for that baby, his family and for us. A this lot of sheriff, good that's going to do. This sheriff, well, wh- whatever it's going to do, it shows the incredible hubris. Oh, yeah. This sheriff wants you to pray for the deputies that threw the grenade in on this child. Uh, they didn't say... 
and that they're de- they're devastated. Yep. Really? How does the family feel? Right. I mean, how does the you, victim feel? Well, they, they they're want, the ones who threw the grenade. They want you to pray for the family too. But who came on whose property and threw a who? What threw whose? I mean, you know, here yeah. we are, some people with some silly costumes on, whipping explosives through people's window, blowing up, blowing in their up in their babies' faces, and then asking for your prayers. What is wrong with these people? Oh yeah. And the sad thing is, probably a lot of people will hear that and identify with the cops and say, "Oh yeah, they're they're just trying to." This is ridiculous. Serving and protecting us. These are munitions that that you know domestic teams, domestic forces used to not have access to. I don't, you know, flashbangs were not used by the FBI. I I dare say until the aughts. Uh, I I mean, was it like a military thing? Did they use them? Well, in the military? yeah. I mean, it's 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 not new, but I mean, this is relatively new, and it was mainly only used. I mean, just just picture this, like the the you know people talk about this all the time, but the militarization of the police. Yeah, I'm I mean, this is a real in... case of this. It's like you know, wait wait a minute, these are Americans. Why are we using such excessive force, criminal or not? What the hell are you doing? Uh, th- oh, uh, this scary. I, I hate that. It is it is very scary. And we do have a couple of calls on the line. So let's talk to Tim. He's got a comment on this situation listening in South Carolina. Hi, Tim. You're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Tim in South Carolina, can you hear me? I hear- can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Tim. What's on your mind? Okay. Oh, cell phone. You know, if okay, you could just talk yeah, yeah. a little more directly into the phone, it's your, your volume's kind of low. Okay. That's, That's better. much better. Right. Can you hear me okay now? Yep. Yes. Okay. Um, I will say regarding the um, the ultimate reality thing, um, I see what you're saying. That can be out of control because um, I, I think I think the word y'all looking for is um, convoluted logic, you know, because it's you know, getting you so so um, the argument is so silly that this becomes circular logic or convoluted logic where it doesn't make any sense at all. Yeah, and, it's it doesn't you know, make sense to me. <laughs> now I'm going to uh, the flash grenade situation yeah. in Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. When when this country gonna realize that these police departments cost cities millions of dollars when they have dumb police officers, you know? Well, yeah. And I, uh, you know, you know. It's, Go ahead. Yeah, they're, they're, they are expensive. Even if the, the fact is, is that you really got to wonder what's the revenue generation um, for, for police officers. And if you're talking about it being tickets, it's a lot easier to have a robot on the side of the road, one of these, uh, you know, speed trap things than it is to have a police officer that are paying, I don't know, between thirty and $50,000 a year, plus twenty and $30,000 a year in benefits and whatever they get in overtime. But they're if the expensive. speed limit was enforced universally, then don't you think people would... Like, find a way to avoid that, you know, like they would go under the speed limit and they wouldn't have any revenue. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But, um, but you know, I don't stand, I don't stand where the, um, where the, um, this seems to be a trend across the nation where our police departments seem to be like, like, just like mindless, you know, like, like you know, they don't really check or investigate, you know, they, they, they take action first and then they, um, worry about the consequences later on. Yeah, it really uh, does seem like, like that. But they don't have consequences. Um, I mean, you know, what's what's liable to happen yeah, in yeah, this situation? Right. Right. That, might, that might be a problem. You're right. right. That might be the problem. No That's how people act right. that have no consequences. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? You're right. You're right. Because I did four years in the military, and um, I, I never had, I never on the base ever heard of police military police officers doing stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? The stuff the being cops do, I never hear them doing. I mean, you know, maybe, yeah. maybe in Iraq mm-hmm. now because cops wow. was in Iraq. You know? Yeah. But, um, but I, I never suppose heard them doing that on the, you know. In the U.S., you know, it never happens on the base in the U.S. Yeah, even if they uh, did get sued or something by this family and they were sued successfully, it would just be the people in the town that would have to put up the money to pay out to the victims. So they're like, they're really get the individuals who actually did the action aren't really responsible for, or they're not paying the consequences of what they did. Exactly. Thank you, Tim, for the call uh-huh. tonight. I appreciate your thoughts. And we've got Pizza Guy on the line listening in Fargo, North Dakota. Hey, Pizza Guy, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, I wanted to bring up uh, the concept of transgender and transsexuality. Okay. Um, I guess I have, a, I have a younger sister. Well, it's not quite my sister. Uh, she's my cousin. I grew up with Matt and I thought I was good. Anyway, uh, she decided uh, with the help of a therapist, she was like 13, that deep down inside she's really a man. Uh, and so then she insists that we use the he pronoun, 
uh, which I was always kind of against. Oh, hold on, for... let me make this clear: the the, the male pr- male pronoun or some other pronoun? Uh, the male pronoun. Okay. Because there's a bunch of them out there, these sort of uh, non-gendered pronouns. Oh, yeah, Z, Z and Z. And Z, Z, and Z, Z, Z. <laughs> yeah. It's confusing. Uh, Pizza Guy, if you, would, if you wouldn't mind, hold the line. We'll talk about this further in moments here on the Sunday edition of Free Talk Live. You've got something you want to talk about. You can call us at 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733, Free Talk Live. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free, just for shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. What if humans found a habitable planet, set up housekeeping, and then got left alone by Earth and its big government? Well, that happened in Freehold, Michael Z. Williamson's seminal work. Now available for the first time in a signed, limited hardback edition. Other books in this series are also available in paperback. I cannot recommend a modern fiction work more highly than Freehold. Earth might have left Freehold alone, but it doesn't stay that way. It's war. Get your copy right now at all major booksellers and shop.freetalklive.com. Americans have always been ready to defend, to serve, and to honor those who defended and are defending all of us. So this month, the freeze-dry guy honors and serves Americans with our meat, rice, and potato sale. Our unit includes four number 10 cans of quality Mountain House cooked diced beef, ground beef, diced chicken, white rice, and two cans of FDG dehydrated diced potatoes. 158 servings per case unit. And during the freeze-dry guy's meat, rice, and potato sale, get one case for only $179, two cases for only $355, or get three cases for only $515, and all come with lots of valuable freebies. For details, click freezedryguy.com and hurry. Sale ends soon. Go to freezedryguy.com or call 866-404-3663. That's 866-404-FOOD. Plus, free shipping to the lower 48 states from the freeze dry guy. The finest freeze dried and dehydrated foods available anywhere for long term storage. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $40 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $40 price only lasts through Porkfest, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Have you ever wanted to help a hardworking person get their business off the ground? Then join me in enjoying some BuzzBox coffee. Let's make a difference one cup at a time. Join us in helping people buy their own coffee farms through at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Free Talk Live coffee drinkers will truly change lives forever. To get the best coffee you've ever tasted, it's organic, shade-grown, and top 1% Arabica grade. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. The first pound's free, just cover shipping. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. You 
are listening to Free Talk Live. It's the live Sunday night show with uh, me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. And 855-450-3733 is our phone number here tonight. If you've got something you want to bring up with us, we are we were talking to Pizza Guy. I think we're going to bring him right back on the line. Pizza Guy, you wanted to talk about um, transgender, uh, uh, your cousin who is transgendered, right? Yep. Yeah, well... You know, I was thinking over the break exactly how to kind of sum it up, because I, I have a lot of kind of disparate thoughts on the subject, and I don't want to come off kind of the wrong way. Um, I guess if you really are, if, if you're truly, like, what does it mean to be trans, trans meaning beyond or past, right? If you're really beyond the gender. No, I, in that sense, tra- trans means, like, not the same. In that sense, like, so there's there's cis and trans, and those are, I think, Latin or Greek words that cis means same, trans means opposite, and they're used in chemistry to describe, like, two things that are facing away for, from each other or facing the same direction. Anyway, if you're transgendered, you know, my understanding of the term is that it means you, the way that you, the way that you identify in your mind is different than your physical body. So you have a male body, but you feel like you more identify as a woman or vice versa. Whereas someone who's cisgender would be, I'm, I'm a female and I also have a female body. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, I guess maybe the whole thing just doesn't make sense to me because it's so collectivist, right? So like either you are part of a group or you're not, if you're, if you're trying to stand up and say, no, I'm an individual. I'm not defined by the group I was born into. Cool. Right. And that's cool, and I'm all about that. And and so, like, that's cool. But, like, cause then if you want to turn around and say, I'm not a part of that group, I'm an individual, I'm a part of this other group, it, to me it just it seems so so cross-purpose. And, and just I don't really understand what you're saying, but... Well, I, I do. Um, I, like, okay, let explain me, it to let me. Let me see if I can go with this. I've, I get told on a relatively regular basis, women are really no different than men except for the parts. And oh, okay. I think I see where then, you're going. I was going to bring the same thing up, Mark. But yeah, go I'm ahead. I'm told that uh, that there are people in this world that are women trapped in men's bodies. Mm-hmm. So if well, they're that, no different, then how does that square? If you don't have the parts, you don't have the parts. Exactly how can you be a woman trapped in a different part? Like, exactly what does that mean? Mm-hmm. And I don't know. And and the fact is, is that what I've decided is, is that this is just none of my business. Um, you know, that I am best off and best served in this life by ignoring this and going by, with whatever pronoun people want to uh, to have for themselves. Themselves. Because I, at one point, I was defending the the language. I stand here for the language English. He means he, she means she, and I will not budge. Um, but then I realized that the language really is about serving us, not us serving the language. I don't need to vigilantly protect the language. And once I was <laughs> able to realize that we use language to uh, to describe things, then oh. Okay, I can let that go, and then I did, and that's fine. But and so now I'm fine with it. Mm-hmm. It sounded like Pizza Guy. You were saying you felt a little annoyed about having to switch, or th- that your cousin requested that you switch call- to calling him a him instead of a her. Pizza Guy, did we lose you? Yeah, yeah. Nope, I'm still here. You know, and you know, I don't know. You know, I, in some ways, I feel like I'm just an offensive contrarian. I always just try to. That's what I am. For the most, yeah, the most <laughs> yes, defensive, the most conflict-oriented opinion there is. You know, that's why, even though I'm more or less an anarchist, I find myself uh, defending Nazi Germany and slavery from time to time. Like, I, just, I, I'm just, offended just, by your use of anarchist. <laughs> 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 exactly. But like, exactly, right? And so, yeah, I guess, what? why does this stick in my craw? I guess, you know, I don't know if it sticks in my craw for the reasons I've said or if it just sticks in my craw because I want it to stick in my craw. Here's what yeah, worries like, me. <laughs> I oftentimes, um, you know, I've I've known a few transgendered people, um, you know, throughout my life, and there's been a percentage of them that I've wondered about their mental health, generally, mm-hmm. not specifically about the transgender thing, but generally, generally, and what I would think would be really terrible would be to, you know, surgically alter your parts and then realize. I don't really want my parts surgically altered. Um, mm, you know, I'm to sure it would. to take 
hormones or whatever. But you know what else would be really terrible? To look at your body every day and feel like this is just so wrong. Yeah. Like, I shouldn't be in here. And that's you what know? this gender dysphoria thing is about. Is yeah. like Somehow you, you know, looking at yourself, you don't. It, you know, it, doesn't it doesn't feel right. It doesn't look right. And yeah. and I can only imagine, you know, I look at myself, and, I see something amazing. And <laughs> they don't, right? <laughs> you know what else would be really terrible? Like if you tried to go into the bathroom, like if you if you have a male body, but you really genuinely feel like you are a woman and you feel more comfortable using the women's bathroom, but How you can't you go in How could you feel more there. comfortable using the women's bathroom, though, if you haven't used because it? Because you feel like you are a woman. Yes, but if you oh, you you grew up in the man's body, you were going into the men's okay, bathrooms well, the whole time. Let's, let's make it simple. Which bathroom do you go into? I guess you go in the one you've always been going into. If, you don't, if you're a little, little uh, like, shy, go into a stall, close the door. If you're agonizing about which bathroom to go into and dozens of other things all day, people call you tranny and all kinds of stuff like that. I mean, I could imagine how, you know, perhaps you may not be in optimal mental health just because you're dealing with so many insults on a daily basis. I think, I think separating the bathrooms is just like how there used to be a white fountain and a colors only fountain. It's just like that, but with the bathrooms. It's all about collectivism. I, I truly feel like this whole gender thing is overblown. And some people have parts that are attracted to other parts, and we should be focused on that. But as far as, like, which bathrooms we go to, what's the difference of gender and race? Why does it matter? Well, you, I think there is sort of an idea problem. that there is some amount of sexual assault that occurs in mixed bathrooms or whatever. I, I would actually prefer if bathrooms were just a single stall and anyone could go in. That's probably my it, preference. but. Guess what? There's a certain amount of physical assault that happens in mixed schools. Does that yep. mean we should bring back segregation? Sure. Like, I mean, I'm not, whole... I'm not uh, necessarily like supporting that argument, but that's just what I understand it to be, you know. So. Yeah, I. But I mean, pizza guy, don't you think like if your cousin is really like struggling with uh, his gender, you know, and, and every day feels terrible about it, like compared to what he's going through, is it really like that big of a deal to call him by the name that he prefers? You know, I'd, I'd feel better if people used uh, different words and different language for me. I, You know, I just, in a very real way, it bothers me that you're trying to individualize yourself by by associating with another collective. Like, we're all individuals. We all suffer. Life sucks. Do you think I like when I look down at my big hairy gut? I'm a 250-pound <laughs> Jew. I don't like that, right? And I feel terrible in it every day. But, like, I don't ask people to, you know, I'm, I'm trans obese. You know, I don't, I don't do things like that, you know, even though I, I, inside I feel like a rock star. You know, and uh, am, I, am I being insensitive? I don't know. I kind of feel like there, there comes a time when there's a line between uh, I'm discriminated against and I'm part of a special, you know, minority, disabled, suffering class, mm -hmm. and life just works. You know what I mean? Like, there's I, a line between there. Yeah. And I, I see what you're saying, politics. man. I, You know, that there are lots of people nowadays who are re rejecting the gender binary in a big way. And, and they want to talk about it. And sometimes they want to talk about it with people that don't want to talk about it. And I think that that's what it's sort of what I hear coming from uh, Pizza Guy here is, is that, look, sometimes I just don't want to have this discussion. You know, it's just like, it's exhausting for me. I've got this gender thing worked out for myself. Why don't you go over there and work it out for yourself? Do you have to talk to me about it? And that I, I get why. Some people feel like, hey, well, I'm educating the world on this. There's danger out here for people like me. I get that. And on the other side, I, I also understand where people are like, you know, I just don't have the energy and the time in my day to keep on having these conversations. There's nothing more collectivizing than language. I, I, it it, it has to be, right? It's a collective concept. It has to be. <laughs> <laughs> Either that or I don't understand the words you're saying. <laughs> Any other thoughts, pizza guy? Well, in another way, I, I almost feel like, I mean, sexuality is a big, I mean, sexuality is it. You know I mean? Like, that's how humans make more humans, right? So, like, in general, and there's dysfunctions in, in, in part of that, nothing, you know, life isn't clean, it's just messy, whatever. But, like, for the most part, you've got people with one set of parts seeking out people of other sets of parts. And I, I really feel, and again, I'm a real open kind of guy. But if I take an honest thought about it, I feel like any kind of misrepresentation, intentional misrepresentation of your gender 
almost constitutes fraud. And I don't and I don't mean that to like try to pin people down. But like, you know, if you're a dude and you're a straight dude and you bring home another dude, like that's kind of not cool that to like point that out, right? <sighs> Wow. You said something kind of controversial. I think we'll have to leave it there. (laughs) This is Free Talk Live. Thanks for the call, pizza guy. I don't know about fraud, but what do you think? 855-450-3733. Imagine a world in which out-of-control governments monitor every action of every person. Wait, that's today's world. But it's still possible to take control of your own life and your own identity. Start building a new world. Visit mathgate.info and learn basic reasoning skills. Earn pseudonymous academic credentials. That is, earn cryptographic proof that the owner of your Bitcoin address learned these skills. Apply for jobs online using your Bitcoin address instead of your name. Take control of your future. Visit mathgate.info. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Free Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Sunday, June 1st, 2014. Silver is trading at $18.83 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,251 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $644. BenSwan.com reports, candidates for minor political parties in Minnesota need to gather 2,000 signatures during a two-week period that ends June 3rd to be listed on the ballot for statewide races. According to the Minnesota Libertarian Party, that's what gubernatorial candidate Chris Holbrook was attempting to do when he was approached by five local park police officers. Holbrook said, we were sitting in the parking lot of the park and five volunteers who were with me were starting to sort our literature. A park police officer came over to us and asked what we were doing. I told him that we were going to gather petition signatures and he said, you can't do that here. We know that we can, we are legally allowed. Because Holbrook and the LP volunteers were aware of the law, they explained their right to be at the park. Within 10 minutes, another four officers were on the scene. Holbrook and those with him began recording the confrontation with police. Holbrook said, the officers asked me for my ID, which I refused because I had committed no crime. He ordered that we stop filming with our cell phones, which he said was illegal. He then grabbed me, twisted my arm, and smashed me against his vehicle. Holbrook says that his shoulder was wrenched and injured and the handcuffs actually cut through the skin around the wrist and actually caused it to begin bleeding. The next day, the charge against Holbrook had already been dropped as he received an apologetic call from the park police chief. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. 
The BBC reports Sudanese authorities are to free a woman who was sentenced to death for having abandoned the Islamic faith, according to a foreign ministry official. Officials told the BBC that Miriam Ibrahim, who gave birth to a daughter in custody, will be freed in a few days. Abdulli al Zarag, an undersecretary at the foreign ministry, said Sudan guaranteed religious freedom and was committed to protecting the woman. The Sudanese government has been facing international condemnation over the death sentence. In an interview with the Times newspaper, British Prime Minister David Cameron described the ruling as barbaric and out of step with today's world. Ibrahim was brought up as an Orthodox Christian, but a Sudanese judge ruled earlier this month that she should be regarded as a Muslim because that had been her father's faith. She refused to renounce her Christianity and was sentenced to death by hanging for apostasy. On Wednesday, she gave birth to a daughter in her prison cell. The court said Ibrahim would be allowed to nurse her baby for two years before the sentence would be carried out. During the 2013 Porcupine Freedom Festival, Davi Barker presented an idea for a renegade psychological experiment. Since then, he has refined his idea and put his plan and research into writing. He explains, We aim to show the world beyond a shadow of a doubt that power corrupts absolutely and corrupt authority deserves no obedience. Authoritarian sociopathy is available from Amazon.com and all major bookstores. The AP reports police used tear gas and water cannons on Saturday to push back crowds of protesters who defied a warning by Turkey's prime minister and gathered in Istanbul and Ankara on the anniversary of last year's nationwide anti-government demonstrations. Riot police fired tear gas on hundreds of protesters on a main pedestrian street leading to Istanbul's main square, Taksim, following a standoff with police. Clashes also erupted in the capital Ankara, where where police used water cannons against a group of stone-throwing protesters. Large numbers of police blocked access to Taksim, and news reports earlier said authorities plan to deploy some 25,000 police officers and up to 50 anti-riot water cannon vehicles around the city to thwart the demonstrations. Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan warned activists to keep away from the square, saying authorities were under strict orders to prevent protest. Despite these bans, hundreds of people tried to reach Toxim. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. For the past several years now, area woman Caitlin Mooney has been convinced that each and every one of her friends should be a professional comedian. Our reporters spoke to Caitlin this morning about her, quote, hilarious group of friends. Karen is so funny. <laughs> Like, I can't even explain it. She's always just saying what's ever on her mind. She has this totally sassy attitude. <laughs> you just can't help but laugh. My roommate, Reishmi, she always has these hilarious stories that, I mean, they're just too much. I'm always telling her that she should just go up on stage and talk. I mean, everyone would love it. Mooney went on to say that her good friend Lauren is so funny she could, quote, definitely be on Saturday Night Live or The Office, a sentiment she echoed about a number of her other acquaintances, including her childhood friend Marsha, her college roommate Angela, her co-worker Julie, and even her sister Jennifer. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We are live here on Sunday night, kicking off the second hour of tonight's program with me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. Freetalklive.com is our website, and uh, we've got a number of radio affiliates. We want to welcome a new one who's just joining us tonight, apparently, WAMTAM 1190 News. You know anything about this, Mark? Is that in Orlando? I'm not sure, but it popped up on the screen, so I figured I'd give them a welcome. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're, we're the Sunday night crew. We don't host the show every night. Normally, Ian and uh, sometimes Daryl, who does affiliate relations for Free Talk Live, are on the show. They could probably give you the scoop on that, but welcome to WAMTAM. If you've never heard our show before, we're Free Talk Live. We're on every single night of the week, and we are very different than a lot of <laughs> those shows out there in talk radio land. So if you have questions or something on your mind, Free Talk Live is a show where you can take control of the airwaves at 855-450-3733. Bring up anything that's on your mind. There you go. 
Yep, WAMT is actually in Pine Castle, is registered, licensed to Pine Castle, which is just outside of uh, Orlando. So Ooh, it's a, it's you really a, know your radio station. Well, I, I, I really know how to use Google. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I knew that there was a, a, a an Orlando station coming in and that it's a you know, nice dial position in the AM dial at 1190. I didn't know really much else. <laughs> so mm-hmm. there you go. Anyway, um, the Mortgage Minute guy realizes that there are organizations and rules that are making it very difficult for people in the um, in, in the world to get mortgage in, in the United States to get mortgages. Dodd Frank, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, but he's got some uh, ways around these rules and organizations. In fact, private loan sellers are competing directly against the U.S. government now, and it's it's working out pretty well. There seems to be a new New dawn coming in the mortgage industry, and he's pretty excited about it. So they're honestly these uh, these stated income loans were vilified during the uh, the housing crash, but not really the problem. Um, in fact, it was mostly the rules and the government being involved that uh, that that was the problem. So stated income's back. You can state your income truthfully, obviously, and then uh, get a loan. Rates are great right now. And it's never been easier for you to get a loan. Just give them a call um, by going, you can call them at 866-288-0088 or go to MortgageMinuteGuy.com. they got a great, great website, just revamped everything. 866-288-0088, MortgageMinuteGuy.com. I'll give you the number one more time. 866-288-0088. All right. So, one more time, 855-450-3733, our phone number here. That is, of course, the ProXPN toll-free call-in line here on Free Talk Live. You can also call us on Skype. Our Skype name is lrn.fm. You'll need to send us a contact request if you are not already connected with us, but we've amassed uh, quite a large list of contacts here on Skype. So, if you've ever called in on Skype before, chances are we're already connected. But if not, just send us a friend request and we'll go from there. Uh, Okay, so, Mark, we were talking about this... um, Police officer, I guess we had a couple of calls come in, but we were talking about a a group of police officers in Atlanta who were doing a no knock raid, uh, had the were on a manhunt, thought that there was a person inside of a dwelling. The person wasn't there, but there was a family there who was staying with some friends because their house had burned down. Their baby was there. There was a baby crib and the police ended up throwing a flashbang grenade into the baby's crib Horrific, horrifically disfigured the baby. It's probably going to die, or he's probably going to die, right? As a baby I, boy. I'm not sure whether he's going to die or not, but he's in a medically induced coma. Right? It ain't great. Paralyzed. This that was doesn't the, look good. Yeah, that was the condition. Um, you know, that was the condition when this article was written. I don't know the specifics on uh, the child right now. This was written on Thursday, but I do know that there's, you know, the, what I thought the relevant sort of update is is. Today, um, there's another article out, this one from Reason.com, where the sheriff of the county has asked that uh, people pray for us, meaning the sheriff. And, uh, you know, I think it, it, it's interesting what he says here. He just says it's, uh, he's insisted that his officers and those of the local police department did nothing wrong and blamed the target of the warrant, who wasn't in the house, for the raid. And... The um, um, for the attack and the um, subsequent damaging of the, the toddler here. And this is kind of interesting, right? Like, you don't have to do good police work to find... Because people are going to be on the run. Mm-hmm. And whatever you do along the way, no matter how bumbling and moronic what it is, is that you're just absolved of any responsibility, apparently. Now, this is the problem with sort of the litigious society. These parents are going to sue these police departments, and they should sue them. But these police officers aren't going to pay any price. This sheriff isn't going to pay any price. The fact that he signed no. off on this raid, if it's he signed part off of on the raid. their job. They have immunity from that kind of Yeah, I mean, even if they get action. suspended, it's with pay. You know, so Oftentimes. What's, what's that? Yeah. In, a lot of times if they get fired, they'll get their job back with the back pay after we find, you know, we find these out, things out every once in a while. They, be like, they get a job in another county and then maybe they have double retirement. It, it can happen. Yeah, that's happened before. I mean, and as far as criminal charges, you know, th- it's unlikely that they would ever be filed. But if they were, there's a demonstrated double standard, you know, for police officers who commit crimes, frankly, like this, who hurt people, who really injure and harm people and damage property and uh, kill people even. They don't get the same treatment as far as jail time or whatever as the rest of us do. Well, oftentimes, um, you know, but they, the, even the process that gets them to jail is 
the the worst part of this is because it's just the conviction the the accusation to conviction ratio for police officers is significantly different than the accusation to conviction ratio of people in the public yeah i mean it's it kind of makes sense though because they're all working for the same team you know the the police officers probably know the judges they know the, all the bailiffs they anyone who's going to interact with them in that journey you know from accusation to trial to whatever is somebody that they know. So, of course, they're going to get treated differently. Um, the, it seems like the one area... Or at least they have some some empathy or um, connection to them because they've worked for the government in mm-hmm. the law enforcement branch. The one area where this doesn't hold true for police is um, sort of sex crimes. Um, you know, if, if a police officer commits a sex crime, then oftentimes this protection just falls apart. Um, but... It, not always, mind you. You think? Yeah, I like mean, Hawaii, right? Was wasn't it in Hawaii with prostitutes? Police officers were the only ones that could actually sleep with prostitutes. That's the law, and yeah. the, the idea is is that well, now we know for sure they're prostitutes. Yeah, um, you know, <laughs> jeez, just checking. They weren't just kidding. <laughs> they weren't just going to take the money and run. <laughs> what? Well, yeah, but I mean, I'm trying to think of some other examples because I've never actually thought about this. So it's an interesting idea to explore about police and sex crimes. Um, there was a judge that got caught masturbating at the bench. Did you remember that? It was, mm, I don't remember that story, but we've talked about so many of these weird things. Yeah. Um, as I understand it, like, he was pretty well protected. Like, I don't think he... I, I think there were a lot of embarrassing stories written about him mm. on the internet, but not as... as I could be wrong, There but was as a police remember, officer fired for mowing his lawn in his underwear. Um, you yeah, know, and, that's and, right. That wasn't even, like, sexual. That's and, just And, and I'd be like, what in the world? <laughs> Somewhat not Why even... would you fire somebody for mowing their lawn in their underwear? I mean, yeah. you know, many of the shorts that people wear, uh, I mean, the fact that it has a fly on it, is that the issue? Um, I mean, you know, many... I, if he was out there in a pair of bike shorts or little hot pants or whatever mowing his lawn, so what? No one would say anything, but it's the fabric out of which they're made. It's the manufacturer's name. I mean, what, why is it that it matters? It sounds like that. in that case, probably they wanted to get him for some... They had some other reason for wanting to That's an explanation. Him. I don't know if it's true. It uh, could be. Uh, All I can think about is just the fact that a flashbang was used. I can't help but, like, I'm just, like, getting literal memories of Afghanistan, you know, and just the idea that somehow it, it makes it really shows how much of a sham laws are because somehow in America things are so bad that you have to use military grade weaponry here. Things, the, the, all those laws and all those freedoms you have, blah, 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 uh, or whatever, or America's so great that you have to use that kind of that kind of stuff in this country. Th- that's that's crazy. It does. It, it seems very odd. I mean, you know, if this is a nonviolent offender, I mean, we're not talking about armed and dangerous. That's a designation that's sort of gone away in modern parlance, uh, criminal justice parlance. You don't, you don't talk about armed and dangerous anymore because I'm sure police officers have been shot by people who are not designated armed and dangerous. And maybe that's why. But you'd think that they could watch the front door, watch the back door, send somebody up to knock and say, hey, Something. is John here? Yeah, I mean, and then people just say, well, police work is hell or war is hell. Well, guess what? Hell is something to be avoided at all costs. What are you doing trying to say that it's okay? 855-450-3733, the toll-free SACL, sorry, Pro XPN call in line. This is Free Talk Live. More coming up. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. What if humans found a habitable planet, set up housekeeping, and then got left alone by Earth and its big government? Well, that happened in Freehold, Michael Z. Williamson's seminal work. Now available for the first time in a signed, limited hardback edition. Other books in this series are also available in paperback. I cannot recommend a modern fiction work more highly than Freehold. Earth might have left Freehold alone, but it doesn't stay that way. It's war. Get your copy right now at all major booksellers and shop.freetalklive.com. 
Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. Our planet is but a giant petri dish swirling with pathogens, all mixed by the filthy stirring straw that is the world's fauna. Simply by sitting on her eggs and breathing, this duck unleashes a torrent of avian botulism, cholera, and duck plague into the air. These jousting elk slough off bits of skin and fur, sending millions of harmful bacteria into the air. Our closest relative, the chimpanzee, is itself the fountainhead of AIDS. Bitter at the ascendancy of man, these scheming apes brood this deadly virus in their jungle lairs. Nowhere on earth is safe from the threat of animals. Even in the bitter wasteland of the Antarctic, penguins walk for miles inland, ensuring their afflictions reach every corner of the globe. This is the Onion News Network. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, the live Sunday night show. Stephanie here tonight. And Brian. And Mark. 855-450-3733 855-450-3733 is the ProXPN toll-free call-in line where you can get in touch with us about anything that's on your mind tonight. Coming up, we're going to have a discussion of what happens when uh, the EU mandates Google that uh, they have to take down things on the Internet that people don't like being up on the Internet about themselves. What happened in the first day that this uh, ruling went into effect? But first, uh, a word from our sponsors. Yeah, and I think actually this sponsor here is one you want to listen to and jump on if you're concerned about what that story is going to be about with Google in the EU. And it's ProXPN. Oh, yes, definitely. And what ProXPN is, it's a VPN, a virtual private network. But what a VPN is, it's a service that allows you, you install some software, you install an app on your computer, on your tablet, on your smartphone, you take your pick. Okay, iOS, Android, Linux, OS X, Windows. You put that on there in every single bit of communication that goes out, every data packet, every me- every piece of metadata that goes out from your computer, doesn't matter what piece of software you're sending it from, on your computer, tablet, or smartphone, is going to get encrypted with the finest, really some of the finest encryption we have on the planet. Right, using- because normally when you uh, browse the web or whatever, check your email, enter passwords and stuff like that, The information that has to go from your computer to your ISP, Internet Service Provider, and and then they, you know, then you can go stuff 
go places online, but that means that your ISP knows exactly what you're looking at sure. online. Or not just your ISP, anyone. It's out in the open. It's out there. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I mean? It, it, for anyone with uh, with the means and the tools to get use of. And that means also if it goes to the ISP, if your employer or some other bad actor group, whatever it may be. <laughs> your employer uh, or some other bad yeah, person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, if they want, if they, they can request, hey, I want their data. And they can hand it over unless... You're using ProXPN. And what I love about ProXPN personally is is the ease of use. It's oh, yeah. It's easy to use. It is. It, it really just takes, you You know, click. It, it'll it'll come on when the computer comes on, and you don't have to worry about it. If I uh, put the computer to sleep or change a location, I just have to click connect again, and then I'm back online and back in business. But other than that, I don't have, any, I don't have to do anything. My YouTube videos come through. I'm able to watch those at speed, and, you know, it's just not a problem. Yeah, and, and you'll get a nice, especially on the computer, on the desktop, you'll get a nice little green light saying, hey, you're good. You're good to go. Uh, you, you really, you want to use this, and, and the ease of use is important because I know I'm a tech guy. I've been using VPNs for years. I used to build my own certificate files, my own PEM files. It was such a pain in the butt. None of that exists with ProXPN. This is world-class stuff here uh, uses open vpn i can't recommend it higher use code ftl20 get 20 percent off or you can use bitcoin yes they support liberty they support the bitcoin community you can use bitcoin and get an even greater discount okay go to proxpn.com slash ftl all right thank you you can say we told you we told you about free pro XPN. <laughs> let's go to the phones and talk to habu listening in wisconsin habu you're on free talk live what's on your mind um hello to you and thank you for the opportunity uh, you know, last um, I, I don't know even if it's germane to bring this up, but uh, uh, what I was going to talk about was um, uh, last night the two the two uh, male hosts were talking about this parent who uh, apparently has um, been fined or um, uh, or reprimanded by the authorities for making his son, a seven or eight year old son, eight year old son, walk from school. Um, oh, oh yeah, walk home. Yeah, so that was on the show last night, and if you missed that show and you want to listen to it, you can go to archives.freetalklive.com, and it'll be right up at the top of there. Yeah, yeah I, I did listen to it, but I didn't have a chance to kind of chime in, mm-hmm. and if it's too late to do that, that's fine. No, oh, go no, right ahead. please. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you know, let me just say this. Um, I really uh, embrace the whole notion of liberty and, and, and what it is that sets America so... so uh, um, different from uh, many other parts of the world. And, and, and that's uh, one of the reasons I came here, um, uh, where I thought I could finally, you know, rest my legs and where, not worry about the police, you know. Where did you uh, come from? Another story. Uh, uh, well, as, as, as a young person, I grew up in East Africa, mm-hmm. in Kenya. Okay. And, and, uh, and it was paradise, you know, weather-wise, this, that, the other. But there were other things um, which, uh, you know, where uh, there was no kind of accountability or what have you. And increasingly, uh, it seems like this is what we have become here. But mm. that aside, let me just go. So, so, so from that standpoint, this is what I really embrace. You know, I, I thought the, the, the guys who were talking about it were a little flip uh, uh, when they were saying, well, you know, uh, the parent has the ultimate right. Of course they do. But we don't know exactly what kind of roadway uh, the person, the young kid had to go through. And, and you know, it seems like it's almost like getting into a pissing match, if I can use that term. <laughs> I mean, nobody wins. Uh, it's better to wait until home where there's a more controlled kind of situation. And, and it, what I'm trying to say is I think the parent heard, had the, you know, um, uh, and, you know, somebody else actually took the, the kid to, to a police. Now, had that happened, gone, had, had that person gone in another direction or overpowered the kid, I mean, this would be on, on the conscience of the parent. So, uh, you, you know, while I'm fully, uh, 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 embra- I embrace and endorse the right of the parent to, to discipline their children, this, I thought, was not the wisest uh, choice made by the parent. It, there was too much of a risk for the child being injured or, or something really dra- terrible happening to the child. That, that, that's all the point yep. The point I want to make. So I was on last night's show. I'm one of the flip guys. And I, at the end of the show, came to the same conclusion, that I don't think that this was, the, this was a good punishment meted out by the parent. However, 
I don't know the best solution because when one turns over the ultimate authority, and I don't, what is ultimate authority? I don't even know if there is such a thing. But when one turns over the authority to the state and to police officers, you get a situation where a guy says, you know, makes his son walk home a mile, which isn't that far, and um, the police then charge him and he gets a $200 fine, which goes to the government for no good reason at all. And he gets a year's probation. And on that probation, anything could happen. Uh, I, you know, plenty of people in probation have violated probation. Most people in probation violate probation. And that means he goes to jail and then the family's that much worse off. It's like the government has no tools for making this better. Yeah, but I don't know if, if Habu's saying that the government should have gotten involved. He just said that the Punishment was no good, right, Hobbit? Yeah, well, I think, and I think he's making the point that it, like, it should have been done at home, you know, and, yeah. and is, is that is that what you're saying, Abu? Yeah, I, I mean, in a more controlled kind of situation where they're at home or, you know, in, in, in a place where the downside to, to affecting the kid was minimal, you know, mm. um, meaning, uh, you know, somebody would, could not have run over their child or... Or, or abducted it, or, or, or shot at it, or you know, there are so many things can, that can happen, and so it, it was the wrong place and wrong time for the parent to kind of uh, you know get into this kind of uh, uh, almost um, like a child you know playing uh, uh, in a childish behavior with this child, and then mm-hmm. you know the child was just too precious to to put that child on the line just to save one's face, I think. But anyway. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. but, you know, let me just go a little further uh, uh, beyond what you said. Yeah, 20 while seconds left. You, <laughs> yeah, 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 while I agree with you, you know, you do read some really horror stories where parents have chained up kids and what have you. And, you know, in cases like that, I think the state does need to be get involved, really, because this is hmm. bordering on sadism. Thank you for the call, Habu. Appreciate your thoughts tonight. This is Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. Springtime is save big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long-term customers know spring is the time to stock up at HerbalHealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for spring specials, including our 500 parts per million colloidal silver, all sizes on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, Hootia and Metabolic Complex, and Pro Metabolic, all on sale now. Also, the Anti-Parasite Intestinal Freedom and Warwood Plus Complex, plus Stevia Liquid Sweetener and the Super Enzymes, all on sale for spring at HerbalHealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and click on Spring Specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education since 1988, Herbal Healer Academy. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. 
Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. A meme is not easy to define. What is it? But you know it when you see it. Amazing. Don't tread on meme.com proves that. I feel so enlightened. Don't tread on meme, M E M E, helping you give the finger to our monetary system of deception by providing you with silver dime trading cards. Unlike today's dollar, they have value. And they look neat, too. Oh, would you look at those? Aren't those just swell? Don't tread on meme.com. While you're browsing their numerous silver dime card designs, take time to download the easy-to-use silver calculator app. This simple piece of technology lets you know instantly, whether using iPhone or Android, just how much your silver coin is worth. Find out all the details at don'ttreadonmeme.com. Now accepting Bitcoin. Don't tread on meme your path to a voluntary society with honest money. Don't tread on meme.com, serving you faster than the Fed prints money. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Sunday night show, and you can call in at 855-450-3733. That is the ProXPN toll-free call-in lines. Bring up anything that's on your mind. Hey, if you want to get some Bitcoins, go to cashintocoins.com. Right now, Bitcoins have been on a sort of a bull run. Um, been a lot of people getting in, I assume, because they're certainly buying. They were at a high of uh, 683 today. I remember just a maybe it was a week ago they were at 420. Yeah, I don't know. There's that's a big difference yeah, between 420 dollars and 683 dollars as far as value goes. But hey, regardless of what they're worth right now, if you get it, you can get discounts at websites like ProXPN. Indeed, <laughs> well, you're going to save money either way. I, the, the thing I, I thing I love about Bitcoin is is that I have a calm assurance um, that they're going to be worth a great deal in the future because of their utility. The fact that you can send and receive money around the world at with you know with no fees or virtually no fees, depending on the situation, the provider that you use. Um, oftentimes, I use one that charges me a small fee for sending and i don't mind i mean it's like pennies it's not it's not like the 50 dollars that uh, western union would and then there's websites so currently today you can send money to somebody and if you can if they can get an internet connection north korea fine that's awesome <laughs> but if they can't sp- Spend it, then they have to turn it into North Korean. I don't know what they've got over there, um, rocks or stones that they use for money. But um, you, you've got to you've got to transfer. <laughs> I don't know it. what they've got over there either. <laughs> <laughs> you've got to transfer it into uh, whatever the native currency is. But every day, new websites are taking bitcoins themselves. Yeah. And as it becomes more useful as a currency, not just as a money transmitting system. That's going to – it drives up the value. The utility drives the value in this circumstance, and there's a lot of infrastructure behind Bitcoins. That's why I believe that Bitcoins are going to be worth a great deal. Um, I think it was Max – is it Max Kaiser that predicted between $100,000 and $1 million per Bitcoin? That is accurate. Yeah. Now, I'm not – I don't know. I wouldn't claim to know, but at the same time, there's – only 21 million bitcoins, and maybe fewer than that on the um, you know it, possible. If you're multiplying that out towards every human in, in the world, million dollars isn't too much. I yeah. don't know if Bitcoin is going to be the only uh, currency in the well, world. Well, I, I, I want to make that comment just real fast because a good reason to get bitcoins is that I don't necessarily believe bitcoins will be the future of money, but I guarantee you it will be the easiest way to get whatever is. 
the future of money. So get Bitcoin. There you go. So go to cashofthecoins.com. It's easy, safe, fast, completely legal, inexpensive. Customer service is their top priority. I have done a great deal of business with Cash into Coins and will continue to do it because they make it easy for you. You can go use a money order, a check, or wire transfer to get Bitcoins. They've got great rates. If you buy, if you have an order under 40 bucks, it's free. They want you to just try it out. They're that uh, evangelical about Bitcoins. They love Bitcoins like I love Bitcoins. And that's why I love cashintocoins.com. And go get your Bitcoins there, cashintocoins.com. All right. You know, we teased this article from uh, that Brian had brought in for show prep about uh, Google and how recently in the EU there was some kind of ruling that said that Google has to take down search results if people request them to be taken down. Is that basically what it said, Brian? Yeah, that that's the gist of it. And the EU is just uh, notorious for you know forcing themselves upon uh you know software companies and uh you know tech companies in general like in over the past you know 15 years microsoft has had to make specific versions of windows for countries in the eu uh i mean or for a very long time anyway mm -hmm. and because they were saying that oh this is antitrust if you have internet explorer built into it yeah, I mean, that's an interesting issue in itself. But I mean, does this affect the whole world, basically? Like if, if someone in the EU requests for Google to take down something nasty on the Internet that's written about me, is it taken down everywhere? Or if you jumped on a VPN to make it look like you were connecting from the U.S., could you see that link that was yeah. taken down? Well, I want to read into this article, but apparently, and this article states this, apparently you it'll only get taken down in the EU. So ah. and, and this is an important fact of the whole thing is that look the then picture it's pointless because people will just right. use a VPN and like right. Pro XPN and then yeah and then <laughs> you get it around like, it anyway and yeah. this will just make VPN services a lot bigger in Europe and Pro XPN is one of the biggest in the world so they're going to be jumping on that absolutely but this is the thing that a lot of people are confused about at least I think because they'd realize the fruitlessness of this is that look the website that you want searched the 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 post you made that you want searched or you know that you want removed from search or the image it's still on the internet mm -hmm. okay it's just you can't necessarily find it through google but guess what folks you've got bing you know DuckDuckGo, which uses the back uh the back end of bing there's other search engines out there so but if they if they let um if they if they made the ruling on google then the rest of these search engines have to follow suit so there's basically going to be a european internet and a um a real internet there's a, there's a happy fluffy silly european internet <laughs> and then a real internet where people who say and do dumb crap are held responsible for it for the rest of their lives i guess well that's not always the case i mean people can put untrue stuff up out there but i mean there's a chinese internet too there's an australian there internet too and those are some of the places the, the australian world. internet says that uh that, that women with flat chests look too much like girl little girls uh, yeah uh, all the porn they have large <laughs> oh boy <laughs> it's very important government function legislating yeah. it's very the size of boobs and porn uh but anyway brian so okay that was going to be my question too mark uh so does it just affect europe or does it affect the whole world and uh, you know I was thinking of um, sometimes towns will basically they want to basically make a law that only affects Walmart or Target or like a big, yeah. big a so-called big box store. Uh, and so they they do it and it like technically it applies to all stores, but really it only affects Walmart. And mm -hmm. so. This ruling is not specific to Google in that way, right? It affects all the search engines. Well, it's specifically against Google at the moment, but of course, you know, it, I guess it would it would just end up getting applied all the way across the board mm. eventually. But, but nobody but, uses Bing. But, so well, that that would be the answer, right? Is that nobody uses Bing? <laughs> right. So, but uh, but I'd be interested in reading this because it's amazing how many people actually wanted oh, to take action. Please upon do it. yes. So it's been less than this is from Mashable that I'm reading. Uh, it's been less than 48 hours since Google launched its online tool that allows people in the European Union to request to be forgotten, quote-unquote, from search results. And the company has already received 12,000 requests, according to a new report, within two days. Right, and this is just wow. so silly. Um, Google is supposed to alter the Internet, essentially, for people who ask for it. It just, it, it's bizarre. Yeah. Uh, the requests are in a response to European Court of Justice ruling earlier this month that found EU citizens have a right to be forgotten online and that Google must remove links to search results that can damage a person's reputation. So Re does that mean that they have to actually look 
every time they get a takedown request, they have to actually look at it, verify that the person it's about is the one who's requesting to take it down and that it's damaging to their character? Like, or they, can they just do it, will they just do it automatically? Well, and what if it's uh, true or not true? There's a, that right. You know, Are they going to be fact checking now? I mean, I, this is the this is the irresponsible part of this whole ruling. Is it's like who, what, how, how, how are we supposed to implement this? Yeah, where's the budget for the implementation of this silly rule that you've just hand down handed down, judges? Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure on on the actual what the law specifically states, and because it's not a short one, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. it's, it's, an, it's another book sized law uh, as to what exactly Google has to do. As far as I understand it, Google, there there is a forgot or, you know, forget add-on essentially, and I think you have to have a Google ID, thus a Google Plus account, uh, you know, to be able to access it. So that's one way of identifying. That's as good a way as Google can identify anybody generally. Yes, 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 they can have all your metadata and they can narrow you down or whatever, but as far as something that doesn't require a whole lot of work out of their algorithm, having a Google Plus ID is the best way for this to work. So, but they're getting these, according to Reuters, they're getting these requests at about 20 per minute. I don't know. Wow. I mean, what, how many staff members should Google be responsible for hiring to take care of these things? How quickly do they have to act on them? If they have one guy who, who completes one uh, person per day, is that sufficient? Or um, do they have to hire a team of 1,200 people, pay them whatever they've got to pay people in the European Union to yeah. do whatever, and just work on these people's make work programs? And what impact is this going to have? I want. I'm curious to ask you guys when we in just moments here. Have you ever had a, spe- a, a a potential date or an employer Google you and not hire you or not date you based on what they found? Yes. Or what about you out there? Eight five five four fifty free. This is Free Talk Live. Tell us your stories. What if you could combine the two most powerful diet ingredients into one incredible weight loss super pill? We've done just that. For the first time ever, the miracle fat burner in a bottle, Raspberry Ketone, has been combined with pure Garcinia Cambogia, described as the holy grail of weight loss, to bring you the world's most powerful diet pill. Get your phone ready, because we're releasing free bottles to the first 100 callers. But wait, we haven't just combined the two most powerful weight loss ingredients. We've combined the six most powerful ingredients. Green coffee bean, African mango, moringa, and glucomonin. All the hottest clinically proven weight loss ingredients combined into one fat-shedding super pill. We call it the Skinny Six Super Supplement, and it's available for the very first time. Be one of the first 100 callers and we'll rush you a free bottle. Call 1-800-514-2945. Find out how to get your free bottle. 1-800-514-2945. 1-800-514-2945. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. If you'd like to listen to GCN programs on the go, I have great news. GCN has created a Droid and iPhone application, and it's free. Just as easy as going to GCNlive.com, click on the banner and download. Before you know it, you'll be listening to your favorite hard-hitting GCN shows, live or on demand, right on your Droid or iPhone, 24-7 and on the go. So download the Droid and iPhone app free by clicking on the banner at GCNlive.com. Thanks again for listening to GCNlive.com. Again, that's GCNlive.com. Hi, this is Larry Smith. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. When the cleaners ruined some special clothing, all they could do was show us a sign that said they weren't responsible. But when they got the letter from one of our Legal Shield attorneys, he promptly gave us a check for $1,152. Worry less and live more with lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! On your knees! Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. 
The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Have you ever wanted to move to the land of Libpair, Libertarian Paradise, where there's fun for everyone that doesn't initiate force on others, fun for the kids, parties for the adults, buy and sell in silver or Bitcoin, scenic hikes and gun shoots, speeches to educate us all? The Porcupine Freedom Festival is Libpair in the White Mountains of New Hampshire for a week this summer, June 22nd to 29th. Get your tickets now before there's no more room. Porkfest, the event of a lifetime. Porkfest.com. That's P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T dot com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Sunday night show. With you tonight, it's me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. And hey, Free Talk Live is not just a radio show. Uh, it can be a TV show, a relatively boring TV show. But we, <laughs> no car chases. You know, we move our hands, we make interesting faces, we sometimes roll our eyes here on the show. And if you want to watch that, and actually probably more importantly, if you want to be able to chat with other listeners who are also watching the show, you, it's can, a nice feature. you can visit uh, cam.freetalklive.com and watch the studio cam. Also get access to the chat room. And you can even catch it later on YouTube. Oh, right. Yeah, we do actually archive the shows now on YouTube. So And people watch them. I'm horrified. I, I'm glad I don't read YouTube comments, but Ooh, boy. <laughs> uh, it's not necessarily known for being the friendliest That's place right. Google on the internet. Google will remove that for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to talk about that uh, here in moments. I've got some more questions, including I want to follow up with you guys about whether you've ever been Googled and had negative consequences come from that. But first, we do have a call on the lines at, by the way, at, at 855-450-3733, which is the ProXBN Toll-free call in line. You can call if you have something you want to bring up on the show. But first, we go to Kickstart. He is actually calling from the FTL chat room. He's listening on the Internet. Welcome, Kickstart. What's on your mind? Hi, Stephanie, uh, Brian, Mark. I'm glad to be calling in and uh, really glad for the work that you do. Um, oh, thank you. Right nice to hear your voice. I've, I've corresponded thank with you. you by email, but I'm not sure if we've yes. ever talked on the phone. Yes. <laughs> I've been frustrated with this flash bang baby story. And, you know, I, I've been talking about it for the past couple of days with friends, family, anyone who will listen, basically. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I was chatting about it in the chat room, spent about 20 minutes trying to tone down my views a little bit. And there are a few others that agree with my sentiments that I'm about to say. And, you know, I don't like the monopoly on force by the government, but I also kind of wonder if it's, you know, in the realm of a good idea to put the monopoly of force to not be one. So, you know, put the use of force back into the hands of people to deliver justice for this blown up baby. I mean, what can we do now to shame the cops to end no knock raids? You know, that that's really, really what I, I want to get at. And, um, you know, I also want to know what your thoughts are on, whether or not this is a case where people really should go to the extreme of considering vigilante justice. Now, I'm going to hang up now because I want to listen to your response. Oh, you right. don't have to. We can have a conversation about it, but... Uh... It's up to you. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I think, Thanks. do you have thoughts on it, Mark? Yeah, sure. I, I, I you know, I'd love to see. Kickstart for the call, by the way. Yep. I, I'd love to see the, um, the, the historical evidence that vigilante justice works any better than uh, shaming works. Um, I think that we have the shaming mechanisms now with social media far more than we had in the past. Um, yeah. And it's working. It's waking it, making its way around. Every one of these stories that goes around, convinces another few people out there that, huh, 
maybe we don't just assume that every time uh, somebody who's got a government who's got a flag on their uh, you know shoulder does something that it's the right, just, and pure thing. Mm, and it may convince some, some of those people are cops, and they say, wow, well, if I don't think about my actions before I do this, I could be facing a PR nightmare like this in the future, or a dead baby, potentially. And, uh, you know, I, I do think that works, Mark. It's not going to bring back the baby. It's not going to give him back his life. Uh, if he survives, he probably won't. But even if he does, he's going to have a, a difficult life. Uh it's not going to bring back the baby, but neither will vigilante justice. I, so, it won't. Um, it won't. And it will also probably create something that, you know, can be spun off and exploited as, see, this is why we need the cops. This is why we need to give them the power to crush uprisings because and, they. And know. remember every story. No one's going to, if there's this. Okay. So let's say that uh, we, we somehow convince, we, we advocate for vigilante justice and somehow convince somebody who's listening to us to, uh, you know, go out and sneakily shoot one of these cops that uh, did this. I'm not advocating for any of this. Um, no, we, neither am I. Let's make that abundantly clear. Yeah. But if such a thing did occur, you would get the corresponding news media story that then would be like, you know, here's the weeping wife, here's the weeping child, and, you know, the whole thing. It just takes it just turns it around and gives the um the sympathy back towards the perpetrators and i i think what we need to do is is this is a societal problem this isn't the police that are doing this this isn't the police chief this isn't the sheriff this isn't the politicians this is every single one of, uh, not every single one, the majority of us that just don't care. People that would rather read People magazine or Us magazine or the sports page or whatever that are so tuned out that they don't know what's going on in their world. I'm not saying they're morally culpable for this. I'm saying that this is the result. When you turn over responsibility for security in your community to an organization that has no responsibility for their action, or at the least very little responsibility, with qualified immunity, here's a surprise, people. Flashbang grenades are going to go off in babies' faces. That's what's going to happen. This is the natural result of not taking responsibility for this. You can't turn something over to a monopoly and expect good customer service. It doesn't happen. The marketplace doesn't do this, and the police are a monopoly or a near monopoly. They're at least a cartelized force. And through social media, like you mentioned, that message is getting out, and that's very valuable. I mean, it's nothing should have to cost a baby's life or a person's life at all, but people are at least finding out about it. And I think you're right, Mark, that the average person now is going to be more aware of things like this happening. I mean, I actually hate to talk about this stuff. It's very depressing. Mm -hmm. it, you feel powerless to do anything about it because we are, we can't do anything about it. It already happened. This baby is hurt and th thousands of other incidents like this are going to happen in the future. And Really, all we can do or the best thing that we can do, I, I think, is talk about it and let people know about it so that hopefully well, I, it, it can be prevented. It, it's, you know, it, it's a worse. This is like the worst thing that could happen, you know, in, in this situation. No, no doubt about that. And these 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 people, especially to say you need to pray for the police officers, for the SWAT team guys is oh, is horrendous. The hubris, yeah. Yeah. Now, what well, the, the sheriff says. Yeah. Now, what the community needs to do. OK, or what I would want the community to do, what I would want, say I was this this father, the father to this kid, I would want not I, I wouldn't want justice done by the butt of a gun or not by the butt, but, you know, by the bullet, whatever. I would want this guy to lose his job, but he has a job elsewhere and I want 75 percent or maybe 80 percent, pick the percentage of everything he makes going into my kid's bank account. For the rest of his life, See, and that, and something like I want reparations. That this this person ending getting the, that person's life ended does nothing. You know, I mean, and it, yeah. it, it really and it's it costly. serves nothing. Yeah. It, the thing is, is that you know when so sharing on social media is nearly costless. You're going through your social media feed. You see something that makes you happy. See something that makes you inspired. See something that makes you chuckle. You see something that makes you upset. Right. Like this is the this is the experience of people going through social media. 
okay, so the share, the like, the comment, these things are nearly costless. Uh, comments, in my opinion, are costly, and I don't uh, generally participate in them, but if I do, I often regret it. They, they cost you time. Yeah. yeah uh, but and, and you get nothing, generally nothing in yep. return. Nobody's mind gets changed, that's Rare, for sure. Rarely the case, but um, it what it, you can say is that it drives up the visibility of the post, and then maybe it'll get seen by more people. So anyway... The the share or the what you know, and I think that's the best thing you can do in this circumstance is just just share, just share it with your friends, show the story to more people, and that's nearly costless. Whereas going out and being a proficient shot um, with a sniper rifle, um, skulking about uh, you know in the dark of night for days and days until you get the opportunity to to take that one deadly shot. Um, the fact that you have to separate yourself from your family and friends because they're going to wonder where you are and why you have grease paint on your face. Um, you know, and all these things that are sort of the 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 necessity if you're going to do vigilante justice, it's just not there's not going to be the the pitchforks and torches. You're not going to get a bunch of people behind you. Hey, let's go, uh, you know, go to the police station and stop this crap. That's not going to happen. And you're not going to, even if you get a band, a small band, if you try to get them to do something, they're going to snitch on you. If you try to do it as one person and you actually have a life, you're never going to be able to do it. If you don't have a life, you are probably already going to do it anyway. So I don't, you know, there's there's no conversation to have around just a vigilante justice. No, it's not restorative. And that's all that really matters with any any wrongdoing being done upon another is there has to be restoration for what happened. And I'm just, just saying it's impractical. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's a battle that is never going to end and that we're like the people, quote unquote, are never going to win either because the government always has more and bigger weapons. They always they have unlimited resources on their side, virtually unlimited to um, to crush you with. And so fighting a violent battle against the government isn't going to work. So, you know, and it may back, it may actually backfire and do worse. It's a terrible situation all around, and I wish we had better answers. I wish it never happened in the first place. Uh, but, you know, important Talking to talk about, about it. Talking about it's the only answer I've gotten. It's, yeah. So, yeah, so far, it's light. working. Shine Things are changing. 855-450-3733. This is Free Talk Live, the Sunday edition. I want to talk about being Googled coming up here in moments. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Burkridge, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. 
This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, May 30th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,253. Silver opened at $19. And Bitcoin is trading at $611.98. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from affordable sound, CD, and DVD duplication for all your print and audio duplication needs. Mention promo code LIBERTY and get 5% off all DVD and CD duplication jobs online at affordablesound.com or call them up 512-459-5253. Support also comes from Voice and Exit, maximizing human flourishing through radical innovation. Tickets on sale now. Get 10% off with promo code FREEDOM. June 21st at Austin Music Hall. Get yours, voiceandexit.com. In the news, an investigation by Forensics Architecture, a research project based at London's Goldsmiths University and New York-based C2 Research, revealed that most drone attacks carried out by the CIA in Pakistan target private homes. The drone strikes usually occur in the middle of the night when families are home and asleep. The research showed 61% of drone strikes in Pakistan target domestic buildings, and more than 132 houses have been destroyed in at least 380 strikes. Out of the 1,500 killed, more than 200 were innocent civilians. A report by The Guardian reveals the NSA struggled to meet the demands of an unprecedented number of FOIA requests following documents released by Edward Snowden. Top officials reportedly discussed ways to fend off journalists, advocacy groups, and individuals who bombarded the agency with over 5,000 Freedom of Information Act requests between June 5th through June 12th of last year. The agency only received 800 such requests during the same period the previous year. And the 62nd Bilderberg meeting is set to take place from May 29th through June 1st in Copenhagen, Denmark. Bilderberg's press release detailed this year's official talking points, which include privacy, intelligence sharing, China's political and economic outlook, and other current events. In attendance will be 140 participants from 22 countries who maintain high-level positions in finance, academia, and media, along with a diverse group of politicians and experts from various industries. The group has fallen under scrutiny, though, due to the secrecy that surrounds the annual closed-door meeting. Support for Liberty Beat comes from The Corey Moore Show, live Friday nights, 9 o'clock central at CoreyMooreShow.com. And support comes from Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. They don't feed the banks by taking credit cards, but you can bet they take Bitcoin. Online, rrbi.co, or by phone, 800-874-9760. This is The Liberty Beat. For Friday, May 30th, 2014, check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. Another milestone for the era of cryptocurrency as Dish decides to accept Bitcoin for payment. In a press release issued by the pay TV provider Thursday, Dish Executive Vice President and CFO Bernie Han says the decision was made as a way to deliver choice and convenience to the company's customers. According to Dish, the move makes them the largest company to accept Bitcoin payments. Coinbase was selected as the payment processor for the Bitcoin transactions, with customers choosing the cryptocurrency for online payments able to use the Bitcoin wallet of their choice. On Wednesday, activists and Ecuadorian indigenous community members held a protest outside the Permian Basin Petroleum Museum in Midland, Texas, demanding that oil giant Chevron take responsibility for damage done to the Ecuadorian Amazon rainforest. Activists condemn Chevron for refusing to pay for pollution left behind by Texaco, whom Chevron bought in 2001. Texaco was found guilty and fined nearly $19 billion by an Ecuadorian court. However, Chevron has refused to pay and countersued the Ecuadorian communities, accusing them of defrauding the court. Hundreds of undocumented immigrants from Central America were flown from South Texas to Arizona and released at bus stations in Tucson and Phoenix this week. A spokesman for the Border Patrol in Tucson confirmed the 400 migrants were apprehended in the Rio Grande Valley of Texas and flown to Arizona due to the lack of manpower needed to handle such a surge of illegal immigrants in South Texas. The move has drawn criticism from both sides of the immigration issue, with some saying the release encourages more migrants to cross over the border illegally. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Central Texas Gunworks, home of one of the first Bitcoin ATMs in the country where you can buy and sell Bitcoin. Visit the ATM at 321 West Ben White Boulevard, number 203. And support comes from Cabo Bob's, non-GMO chips, homemade tortillas, and no high fructose corn syrup in anything. Online at CaboBob's.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, May 30th, 2014. 
I'd like to tell you about our newest innovations in helping to keep our communities safe. Problem Creation Policing. Problem Creation Policing, or PCP, is a way to get the entire community involved in maintaining a safe neighborhood. This is more than just a neighborhood watch. We plan to have officers on the ground helping, aiding, and surveilling for illicit activities. You never know when you're going to find some young punk doing something illegal out in public. That's why we're going to have officers everywhere. You never know when they're going to pop up. So we want PCP in our homes, at our jobs, and in our schools. We want PCP everywhere. How can you get involved in PCP? Well, for starters, you can call your local authorities and ask them how you can get PCP. I'm Byron Kingsley from the Citizens Respecting the Authority of Police. This is Free Talk Live. We are launching into the third hour of the program tonight. It's me, Stephanie, with you. And Brian. And Mark. You can call and bring up anything that's on your mind at 855-450-3733. That's the ProXPN toll-free call in line. The question I wanted to ask uh, to start off this hour is, you know, have you ever been Googled and had somebody find out something about you that then you later learned was the cause of you not getting a job or perhaps not getting a first date with somebody or something like that. 855-450-3733. And this relates to the story that we were discussing about Google and this ruling in the EU saying that they're, they have to take down links that people report that they want Search to Search results down. they have but to take down. But only in Europe. <laughs> right. They still show up in other countries, apparently, mm -hmm. around the world. I mean, it's still kind of early on to see how this is taking shape, and Google is not responding to requests on how it is taking shape. So we can only guess mm. by Reuters and some others. Now, Mark, you said you had a story about this. Yeah, so this happened to me. I, I stopped dating. I mean, I'm, I'm married, and I guess I've been married. I don't know exactly what year I got married. But, um, uh, you know, like 2005, five, four, something like that. And I don't think people were searching other people's names before they went out on dates nearly as often as they are today. I just don't think that was as commonplace of a practice. Mm -hmm. And so that didn't really happen to me um, so much. But I did have a job situation one time um, where I don't know if it was what, what search engine or what way they found out, but I really, really believe that they did search me and um, come up with the information. Now, this is the difficulty with somebody searching your name coming up with some information and making a decision on it is you never get to rebut it. You never have the opportunity. Mm, yeah, that's If you're a good point. going for a rental unit and somebody says, oh, just put their name, because I used to do rentals and we darn sure did a check, a credit check on people. Do you pay your bills? If you don't pay your bills, well, we have a different we have a different program for you, or we don't have a house at all. Um, Sometimes those in, that information can be wrong, even if it's a social security number. They can be fra you know fraudulently used, sure and can. you may not even find out about it unless you're doing a credit check on yourself every month or whatever. And oftentimes, I would have the conversation when it comes to a credit check. I'd have that conversation. Um, look, here's your credit report. It ain't so good. Can you tell me about this incident, this incident, and this incident? Um, and, you know, whether we worked around it or didn't is just whether we did or didn't. But if I did a Google search, and I did, I do criminal background checks, I want to know um, who's going in. You know, what What does this mean? And, I, you know, this person doesn't get an opportunity to defend themselves. They don't get to say, well, this happened or that happened. And many times decisions are made based on that. Now, the the good news is, is more and more people are being convicted all the time. The government's racking up the uh, the convictions, and it's getting more and more difficult to find somebody who to date or to uh, to put in the house or hire that isn't a criminal, uh, doesn't have a criminal record of some sort. Yeah, it's, it's so interesting because you hear all the time that employers are now searching people, and sometimes they even want access to your Facebook profile to see what pictures you have on there and stuff. And That's why you should have a fake Facebook profile. Well, should you? I mean, I don't. I really don't know how much that factors in. I haven't. I haven't worked to, for a, worked for a person for a living in, yeah. in more in a decade or so. Or so getting get on that, I don't know how yeah. long it's been, but it's been some time. It's been a while since so I. So I really for can't jobs. give that advice too too well, but. But you know, the point I wanted to make is that it seems like now everybody has potentially 
embarrassing or just personal stuff online about them that's shared, whether they wanted it shared or not. I mean, you could not even have a Facebook profile, but people upload pictures of you and tag you in them or whatever. And so does it really matter if everybody has embarrassing pictures of themselves? You know, like how well, much does it really affect your chances of getting hired? I've seen actually a study that said, sorry, Brian, one second. No, go ahead. I actually saw a study once that uh, it was on LinkedIn and they were surveying employers and they said that basically two thirds of employers had hired somebody because of something positive that they saw about the person online. Uh -huh. And only one third had not hired some someone because of something that they saw online. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, a lot of jobs are looking into even your social presence. You know, how many followers do you have on Twitter? How many? I mean, you know, for some high end jobs, this is the real thing. I mean, they. Well, if you work so, in PR, that makes sense. Right. I, well, sure. <laughs> marketing. Whatever it may be. But I mean, you know, they may not hire you because you're not online when you think that you're actually doing something good. So, I mean, mm. this this can cut both ways. It hasn't really been a problem, I don't think, until like maybe 2008, where this was actually serious for anyone that wasn't a celebrity. You know, mm. uh, but I mean, my myself, I, I, I'd have to think I'm, I'm completely unhireable. I am so <laughs> thankful. <laughs> I, I have said this many times. I don't know if I've ever said it on air, but I am so thankful to work for Free Talk Live because Mark and Ian totally accept me for who I am because I am insane. And I mean, no job would hire me if they got to look at my Facebook page or my Google Plus or my Twitter. It just wouldn't happen. But I jump on and I'll actually rebut some of the things <laughs> you say. So, I mean, you know, it, it just goes to show. Brian, Brian does sales here on Free Talk Live. And what happened to me was I used to, I've been to prison for those who don't know. I spent eight and a half years in prison. I uh, was involved in a situation where a man was killed, and it's, you know, it's a tragic situation for which I wish I, there was something I can undo, and I can't. And I, but what I got very lucky, a man entered my life who offered me a job doing uh, radio sales at his uh, radio station group, and obviously I took him up on it. After a couple of years, I was ready to move on, and I was looked at the newspaper in the town, and the newspaper... I sincerely believe looked at me and wouldn't hire me based on um, you know the the conviction mm -hmm. that they that had been reported in their paper, right? Um, which of course they probably did. Hey, you know this is probably a standard practice of theirs is let's check our archives and see if the name comes up, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, it did, and there it is. And so I didn't get I didn't get hired for that job. Meh, you know, no big deal. I went on and got a different job, but I do believe that that was a situation where I didn't get one because of of that. And I, you know, sometimes I, when one door closes, another opens, though. You know. Yep. Uh, you know, there was a study recently that was out that uh, shows that, in fact, um, can people convicted of felonies uh, are have a difficult time getting jobs, so therefore they tend to work harder, show up to work more um, earlier, and be more loyal as employees. Yeah. Mm. So there's. Um, <laughs> I remember we talked about on the on the show. There's an advantage to hiring people who've been uh, convicted, but I can understand why, you know, those that are faint of heart and a, a person who's not a business owner tends to be, right? Like just a middle management individual who's a sort of person who's hiring me, they mm -hmm. tend to be a bit faint of heart. And I can see totally why they'd be like, I, I would kill everybody in here. A lot of times people get to those positions, you know, sometimes to a certain extent, you get to be a manager or whatever by following the rules, especially in academia. You know, you move up the ranks by being able to fit in and fall in line and kind of do what you're supposed to do. Um, so that that kind of doesn't surprise me that they might be afraid of taking a risk on hiring someone like that they perceive as risky, I guess. Yeah. All right. We do have a call on the line. James in Arizona. Hey, James, you're on Free Talk Live. Well, thanks for taking me on, Stephanie. Sure. What would you like to talk about? Smears, well, speaking of online smears, I would like to respond to uh, the Game Boy fanatic that you have, Mark. The what? The, one has the Game Boy addict? Game Boy fanatic of yours and Ian's that takes such great exception to the things I say that he not only... I'm sorry, James, who are you? I'm, I don't understand who you're talking about. Well, you would instantly if you uh, looked on Free Talk Live's Facebook page and clicked on Aaron Clark, because Mark actually has a comment on there to otherwise known as AC about the video that he posts, which is literally a smear of me, uh, quite literally. So may I have the time to respond to it, Mark? Because it what? is in total. 
No, um, I mean this is a uh, uh, this is a thing between you and this guy. Three minutes to re- I don't expect you to take me on for 43 minutes, but I should like to say that I completely agree with something you said, Mark, and Matthew, by the way, about to live by the sword is to die by the sword. Yep. Forgive me again for bringing it up. The people in Hiroshima go into munitions factories for the previous 11 years of their life or before they were shut down forever. Uh other than the innocent children and the forced laborers from Korea and China that were working there, everybody else that were their adults were working for a war machine. But I can hear the music. Did anybody, like um, were, were there no bakers? Were there no uh, cobblers? Were there no nothing in this town? The public papers that had been pressed in Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Hold, the, hold the line, forces. James. Hold the line. There's more coming up here on Free Talk Live. What if you could combine the two most powerful diet ingredients into one incredible weight loss super pill? We've done just that. For the first time ever, the miracle fat burner in a bottle, Raspberry Ketone, has been combined with pure Garcinia Cambogia, described as the holy grail of weight loss, to bring you the world's most powerful diet pill. Get your phone ready, because we're releasing free bottles to the first 100 callers. But wait, we haven't just combined the two most powerful weight loss ingredients. We've combined the six most powerful ingredients. Green coffee bean, African mango, moringa, and glucomonin. All the hottest clinically proven weight loss ingredients combined into one fat-shedding super pill. We call it the Skinny Six Super Supplement, and it's available for the very first time. Be one of the first 100 callers and we'll rush you a free bottle. Call 1-800-514-2945. Find out how to get your free bottle. 1-800-514-2945. 1-800-514-2945. Adam Miller here with Midas Resources. Today, May 21st, 2014, gold opened at 1288.50. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for thirteen thirty five forty, six sixty seven seventy for half ounce, or three thirty three eighty five for a quarter ounce. That's thirteen thirty five forty, six sixty seven seventy, and three thirty three eighty five. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 
You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Sunday night show with me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. And you can call us at 855-450-3733. Bring up anything that's on your mind. That's why we call it Free Talk Live. We've also got a Skype line. Our Skype name is LRN.FM, and you can connect with us there. And uh, two ways to call into the show. By the way, the phone lines and Skype are sponsored by ProXPN. Indeed. VPN provider. (laughs) Well, Ian and I are going to uh, Chicago on July the 19th and 20th for the North American Bitcoin Conference. It's uh, inside the loop at Chicago's McCormick Place South Building. And I I assume that means there's a McCormick Place North Building. What's the loop? The loop is a, I think it's a road, or maybe it's a train track. It is some kind of well, transportation thing that goes around the city. <laughs> Chicago sits right on um, the Lake Michigan, and then there's this thing, whatever the loop is. Um, you know, I'm not sure. I think it's the, the L train. I don't know. Got I should, it. Sorry, I should not I be talking curious. about this. I d- <laughs> didn't mean to distract you, Mark. The, inside the loop is the city, the city city. Outside the loop is Chicago land. That helps. Okay. Yeah. So there you go. Um, lots of different speakers are going to be at this event. Um, I'm excited about seeing folks like Jeff Berwick from the Dollar Vigilante, Trace Meyer from the Ar- Armory Wallet, Kathy Reisenwitz, uh, C- Tony Gallippi from BitPay, Roger Veer, also known as, I'm very excited to see Roger Veer. I haven't seen him in a while, so it's always nice to go out and get dinner with R- Roger. He's known as Bitcoin Jesus. And uh, Philip, uh, here's a guy I don't want to go see, Philip Filipowski of the Peaks Action Network. And, of course, Ian and I will be doing our show live, so you can see Free Talk Live and done in its entirety there at the event. It should be uh, fun. You can go get your tickets at btcchicago.com. Pay in Bitcoin if you like, btcchicago.com for the North American Bitcoin Conference. I'm, I'm really excited about it. All right. Well, let's go back to the phones. James is on the line. James, um, you mentioned something about the Free Talk Live uh, Facebook page before that, you know, someone had posted a video about you there. And I was wondering, did you respond to them on the Facebook page or did you just call in about it? Well, should I? But since you asked, Stephanie, I don't respond on Facebook because I've already had these debates with uh, progressive Facebookers uh, that do like to do online Google searches, and then they find your email address, and they end up attacking you via that uh, ways of the Internet, by the way. And by the way, if you take a look at your own Facebook page, Stephanie, most of the, most of the comments on your Facebook page are retarded, insignificant, and don't deal with any issues. They just are, There's so many progressives on your page that just love to smear. They don't want to talk about the issues, which is why I called in. But speaking please, of please talk about an issue, Wit, instead of something that ta- happened. Let me talk about what I wanted to talk Go about. Go no, 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 right no, ahead. No, no, no. You know what? No, shut up. Mm. Shut up. You, no, no, no. no. Okay. You really, you, you, I want you to give me an apology because you talked about Game Boy addicts. I am a Game Boy addict, and you insulted me, sir. You no, you no, 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 you insulted me. I want you to say you're sorry. If you don't say you're sorry, you can hang up on him. I don't care. Say you're sorry. Say you're sorry, James. Come on. I want you to say you're sorry, James. He's dominating you the way that you try to dominate the show. Yeah. Um. You just yelled. Uh, forgive me. Yelled over. No, 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 no. You need to say you're sorry. I can't forgive you until you say you're sorry, James. Yeah. See, if if somebody's mean to you constantly because of one thing that was said in the past, that's what this feels like, James. It's like a vendetta. Can I talk here? Can I respond? Did you say you're sorry yet? No. Did you say you're sorry to me? To all the Game Boy addicts out there, I'm 33 years old. AC is 25. We're not little kids. We like Game Boy. You need to say you're sorry. Call in about anything you like. Yeah, but you got to be entertaining. Oh, you've had plenty of time to talk oh, about really? what you want. You've had hours and hours of free talk live. Please. So I'm definitely entertaining. Don't lie. Say you're sorry. <laughs> Say you're no. sorry. Wait, you know, speaking of Say Facebook page, speaking of our Facebook page, James, we've had a lot of comments with people who just really don't. In, you know what? I'm going to turn his audio down a little bit here. 
<laughs> no, James, I just want to give you some feedback because we've had some feedback about your calls and people say it's kind of unpleasant, you know, to listen to the constant kind of negativity and you did this to me. So I just want to let you know about that feedback that that's what people that's people's experience of, you know, hearing you on the show. And I, it's pretty hard to imagine having a productive conversation. So I'm just going to let you go. So see you later, James. That's it. Um, eight, five, I didn't five. get my apology. <laughs> yeah, I you know. never will. I, I yeah, you never will. Thirty three <laughs> year olds. Thirty three years old. I love Game Boy. <laughs> well, um, yeah, it's fu- it's funny because. The fact is, is that uh, Wit is, is uh, you know, he just sucks in this stuff about, they talked about me, 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 and I just don't want to talk about him anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, okay, let's go back to talking about um, the Google issue. Absolutely. Is there more to that story? Oh, yeah. So, going on with, they're talking about the form. This is Reuters said that they're getting 20 per minute requests mm-hmm. to take stuff down. And the form allows EU citizens to ask Google to remove links to search results where their names appear Uh, If the results are inadequate, irrelevant, or no longer relevant or excessive in relation to the purposes for which they were processed, it is limited to citizens of the EU and those making link removal requests must provide documentation verifying their identity. So Google Plus isn't even enough. They have to provide some kind of documentation. How crazy must this be? Wow. And they still got 12,000 requests just in the first couple of days, huh? And uh, what I'm wondering, but but of course you have to check this documentation. 12,000 requests means you know, somebody spending a lot of time checking documentation, but it just sounds like basically you can have something removed from the Google search results for any reason at all. I mean, irrelevant, right. um, uh, you know, not relevant any longer, excessive. Uh, I mean, these are pretty subjective terms. Right. Yeah. The company's CEO, Larry Page, expressed frustration with the ruling in an interview with the Financial Times saying the measure could interfere with innovation and encourage other countries to censor its citizens. Now, that comment by Larry Page is ridiculous. What? Because Google has no problem taking down, you know, posts or whatever that our government requests. Okay. And so, and long before this EU ruling came out, just oh, as Twitter yeah. does the same thing, Facebook does the same thing. I'm not saying any of these companies are better than the other. Okay. But it's ridiculous for him to say that they're going to censor citizens. Google plays ball with censoring citizens for the past. They've been doing it for 10 years. Mm. Well, this is kind okay. of like, okay, so, um, you know, anybody who comes up to an event and asks me for an autograph on something, I give them an autograph. But I can understand why some celebrity doesn't hand out autographs anytime that they want to um, hand out autographs sure. because everybody would want them. What Just because some law enforcement agency asks Google to take sound, down something now and then and Google complies doesn't mean that they can comply with 1,200 in the first day requests from just the average Joe that wants something taken down. And so the claim here is is that, you know, it, it restricts innovation. I would concur because it, you know, Google, Google has fewer, only so much money to spend on personnel. Some personnel need now be applied to taking care of these 1,200 requests, and they can't do something more innovative. Yeah, I'll, I'll concur. It will stifle the innovation that... That Google is trying to do. No no doubt about that. That is an accurate statement on Larry Page's part. But to say that it's censoring citizens, this is too little too late to be concerned about the censorship. You're saying you know, it's already happening. Yeah, it's, it's been happening f- as long as Google's existed, I would, I would imagine. Okay. I know at least it's been going on for five years. Uh, so so that, that part's kind of crazy. Uh, but yes, it does stifle Google's innovation. But is that innovation a good thing? You know, Google's been around, I don't know how long, but longer than I really realized. I, I remember there's maybe in the, you know, 2000, 2001, 2002, there was this sort of war over who was going to be the uh, search engine. And then at some moment in time, it was Google and there was nothing else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. 855-450-3733 is our number here on Free Talk Live or LRN.FM on Skype. More coming up on the Sunday show. If you owe the IRS back taxes, listen carefully. Sweeping changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever eliminate their tax debts once and for all. And now I can help you reduce or eliminate your tax debts and end your tax nightmare. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla. I've helped thousands of people reduce and eliminate tax debts they couldn't pay. And after more than 30 years of experience dealing with the IRS, I can tell you there's no such thing as a hopeless tax case. And with the IRS's new policies, it's easier than ever to put your tax debt behind you once and for all. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. 
Call 800-346-6829. Learn how I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX or go to TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. You can't win if you don't enter, and you actually can improve your chances of winning a prize drawing if you wrinkle up your entry blank. I'm Holland Cook from survivalspeech.com, and I speak from experience. Why this works? If they'll be spinning the drum before drawing, your entry blank will move around more than, and not adhere to, other perfectly flat entry blanks. And if they don't spin the drum and merely reach into a box full of other perfectly flat entry blanks, many of which are sticking together, yours will feel different to the person reaching in. When you win, act surprised. And if you're looking for work, this is a metaphor. For more tips on sticking out in a world where just too much blends into the blah, 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 hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, the live Sunday night show with me, Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. You can call in 855-450-3733 or on Skype at lrn.fm. You can go get a free Bitcoin wallet at blockchain.info. Now, what's a wallet? A wallet is essentially a bank account for your Bitcoins. And Bitcoins are an online currency that doesn't have any international borders. And I think they're the future of money. That's my opinion. But... You can go get a free account just by going to blockchain.info. It's the best online account out there. They do the encryption right in your browser. You're able to access it from your computer, on your smartphone, on your tablet, uh, wherever it is that you need to access it. They make it easy. And they've got a new merchant app. If you go to blockchain.com instead of blockchain.info, you can get the merchant app for your business. If you've got a physical business, um, you can use this app on your smartphone or a tablet there in the store to accept Bitcoin safely, securely, and for free without your employees being able to sort of mess with your account, which, you know, you don't give most of your employees your PIN number and your debit card, and you don't want them to have that with your Bitcoins either. So there's no terms of service. Imagine that. No terms of service. (laughs) What bank would do this for you? No terms of service, no ID requirements of any kind. Just go to blockchain.com, 
Download the app from the Google Play Store there. Get started. Zero fees. Blockchain.com. All right. Let's go to Skype where Nathan is on the line. Hey, Nathan, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, fellow uh, Game Boy addict calling in. <laughs> right on, Nathan. I know. Weren't you offended? Uh, I was. Uh, I, I know. You know I, I like uh, I like a lot of games in the Game Boy. It's a great system. Uh, you know, no one should insult this, uh, you know, this historic piece of technology. Absolutely. This, we'll uh, play Pokemon later. You know, I, yeah. I have to say, at first I thought that James was talking about Johnny Ray because he does his game of the week. Yeah. I, I don't pay attention to Free Talk Live's Facebook page. But anyway, what were you calling about, Nathan? Well, I got this brochure today in the door from some Jehovah's Witnesses, and it starts out by saying, all scripture is inspired of God. So I thought I'd uh, read you a couple of the points on here. And get to, <laughs> I'm not curious what I'm curious what Brian will say, because uh, I want to I want to make him less hireable uh, by response. <laughs> is that Can't possible? Get any worse. <laughs> OK, so the, for the first point is that the amazing harmony. The Bible was written over a period of 1600 years by 40 different people, most of whom never even met. Yet the book is harmonious with one central theme. Um, are we supposed to rebut that? You can say whatever you want. <laughs> I don't think it's harmonious. Um, I'm particularly, I mean, obviously a translator, the, the same translator works on, or a team of translators usually, uh, works on a book. It's going to have the same sound all the way through, even though, um, you know, there's 40 different authors and 60-something books. But, uh, I mean, no, the when you when you look at the prophets, they, they focus on different things. Um, you know, they some of them repeat some of the same stuff, but it's really... You know what? What's harmonious between Samson killing a thousand Philistines with the jawbone of an ass, and uh, you know Jesus uh, changing water into well, wine? I mean, it's just a bunch of stories. Yeah. See, this is this is where I think I might disagree. Um, I don't think there it was divinely inspired, of course. But as far as it being harmonious, I think the Bible very it it really does. And there's people that make lists, and I've and of course I've read these. Um, but I I don't think the Bible contradicts itself a whole lot. Uh, and a lot of people say that the God of the Old Testament and the God of the New Testament contradicts itself, but I disagree uh, because the book of Revelation clearly shows Jesus as a genocidal uh, maniac. It, you mean Revelation? But I think Revelation should even be in the Bible. Yeah, see, that, I, I disagree with you there, too, because uh, it's the oldest book we've got. Um, uh, well, you know, obviously Job's older than Revelation. Oh, no, no, no Job he... is the oldest, oldest <laughs> book we've got. Yes, that's true. And that's there's there's things to explore there. But as far as the New Testament, the Revelation is one of the books we know was written in the first century. Okay, so Greek and uh, Norse mythology, this stuff has, this, uh, you know, continuity to it in the same way that the Old and New Testaments and the Bible has continuity to it. That doesn't make it divinely inspired. No Christian would say that, um, that you know, the, the, the Norse mythology is divinely inspired, or very few of them would. And this is the thing, by the way, I think the atheists really have the best, um, the, the, the best kind of uh, jab mm. at is, is, look, you you're an atheist to all the other religions around the world, except your religion, whatever your religion is. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and most likely atheists your religion is the religion one further, right? mommy and daddy taught you. Well, that's interesting because I'm not even sure that Greek mythology has a, a central theme necessarily. But well, What's uh, the theme on? of the Old Testament? Is um, really the Messiah the theme of the Old Testament? Yeah, it ends with the prophecy of the son of righteousness. That's S-U-N, not S-O-N, by the way. So this, the next two points are kind of related, or the last two points are kind of related, since they seem to be talking about the captivity of ancient Israel's ancient Israelites in Babylon. The first one is honest history. Secular historians seem quick to cover over the defeats of their people. In contrast, Bible writers candidly recorded both their failings and those of their own nation. And it cites this uh, Second Chronicles passage where it talks about how God uh, delivered the people of the Old Testament into Babylon. He brought up against them the king of the Babylonians who killed their young men with the sword in the sanctuary and did not spare young men or young women, the elderly or the infirm. Yeah, I don't know. Um, this doesn't do anything for me. The fact that, the, you know, some prophet, um, some person uh, wrote that this is the reason God wanted us to be <laughs> captured by the uh, Babylonians and that got recorded in some way, shape or form doesn't to me convince me in any way that uh, that the you know the the bible's true look for me well, this is all it ever this is all it took this this uh, yeah i had wasn't a christian at the time i figured this out but this really was what it undermined what undermined it for me the book at least christianity modern christianity says that i need to believe on jesus's name in order to be saved is that the terminology they use 
I believe so. Jesus' name isn't Jesus, it's Yahushua. If a book can't get its central character's name right, and they use that name as an incantation <laughs> to save my soul, then I don't see how the book can even operate. Now, you don't have to agree with me you just have to see my logic and then you have to believe that a fair and just god would send me to to be tortured for the rest there's not even time there's no way to describe eternity um i wouldn't you know i wouldn't cut uh, my son's uh, fingers off with 10 snips because he touched something i didn't want him to and anybody who would send their kid to uh, eternal damnation because they didn't believe some old book it's a, it's a sick homicidal maniac well, I, you know, I, I can, I want to kind of debate you on the whole name thing because the real name of God is YHWH. That's a tetragrammaton. Nobody knows it. Right. Or at least if they do, they're not saying but it. It's, but and, Jesus said you had to believe in my name. Right. But if he's God, if he's part of the Trinity, Trinity, that would be the tetragrammaton. And so really whatever name you use is about the only thing you could possibly use because nobody knows the tetragrammaton. But regardless, I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm being an atheist. So? Yeah. It, it doesn't, it, it do, but the fact is, that, like I said, it doesn't matter because people can call in and debate me all night long. Sure. It only matters if that point is valid for me, not if it's valid for you. Sure. Now, yeah. Now, to, to get to the, the verse that, um, you know, the Babylonian captivity and, and actually getting delivered from Babylon that, that Nathan oh. brought up. Um, well, it's funny you bring that up because the very next verse cites the passage where it talks about God delivering Israel from the Babylonians. So not only did... Uh, you know, he deliver us into their hands, but then he subsequently in the next chapter delivered us out of their hands. Yeah, and this so. is and this is strange because they got delivered, or they got rescued by the Persian Empire, which most Christians and even honestly a, a lot of Jews claim now are the modern incarnation of evil, that being Iran and a lot of these Middle Eastern countries. But Cyrus the Great was actually in Torah; he's considered a Messiah. Okay, so the head of the Persian Empire, because we have this, we have this this narrative in the Western world that you know, like uh, like the three hundred, right? The, the three hundred Greeks, yeah. okay, that they were the heroes. They saved, you know, they brought on Western civilization. Actually, biblically, the Persians are the heroes. G Greeks are not. So you have there's a really there's a huge disconnect between you know the wonders of Western civilization and then biblical history, because biblical history says that the Persians were the good guys. So, uh, what, what, sorry, why, are the, why is Cyrus the Great the good guy? Uh, uh, because, by the way, the passage here says that uh, God is calling him to act as his instrument, even though he doesn't actually believe in him. So that doesn't really sound like an endorsement. No, it, well, it is, because Isaiah prophesied that Cyrus would save the Israelites 150 years before he was born, supposedly. Okay, And Cyrus the Great, again, is the, the Hebrew there is reference to him being a Messiah. He's talked very, very kindly about and he actually was the one that said okay jews you can go back to your temple so he was very kind to, Ju to judaism to, to allowing the faith of god to continue persians are heroes nathan it any quick response um oh uh, no i just like to hear more about that 150 years before today, okay hold the line nathan okay. this is free talk live more coming up stay tuned <laughs> I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact and helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com Attention America, within a little known government document is devastating information that could cost the United States its most valuable asset. My name is Jeff Opdyke, former reporter for the Wall Street Journal. I've uncovered shocking evidence within the details of document FT-900, revealing the largest cover-up of President Obama's career. This will have a substantial impact on our nation. Millions of Americans will fall into poverty overnight. 
A recent report from the Treasury Department said an event of this nature has, quote, the potential to be catastrophic. Within a matter of weeks, the way of life for millions of Americans will be destroyed and the standard of living will be like nothing this country has seen in nearly a century. To learn how you can protect yourself and your family from this government attack, visit www.obamasecret1.com. Again, that's www.obamasecret1.com. Free Talk Live. Some old codger Republican is screaming at his radio. This is not a democracy. Yeah, it's We're a not Republican a democracy. We live in a republic. And <laughs> to that guy, I, I just take a take take a deep breath. Tell me the operative difference between a democracy and a republic. Well, we elect representatives in the republic. That's true. And you respect a, rights. A direct democracy certainly is a democracy where everybody gets a, a, a vote. But tell me about this respecting rights thing. What other republic, in fact, respects rights? The People's Republic of China. Right. So this idea that we live in a republic is really just fallacious. It's just some term that someone's come up with. In Greek, democracy means of the people. Republic in Latin means for the people or, or something. Don't These, forget the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. That's right. a republic. Right. There's another <laughs> Republic. I mean, republics are all over. Take a pill. Republic means nothing. <laughs> Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. It's a live Sunday night show, and there's actually only one more segment in the program tonight. So if you want to get your calls in, you better do it quick at 855-450-3733. Uh, we do have someone on Skype now, so I won't give out the Skype. By the way, it's uh, Stephanie with you. And Brian. And Mark. You can get co- a free pound of coffee by going to coffee.freetalklive.com. It's great coffee. It's 100% organic, top 1% grade Arabica beans. It's shade grown, and it's delicious. I drink BuzzBox coffee every day, and um, it's, it's, it's wonderful coffee. But what's even better is BuzzBox has a real concern for people around the world. For every 10 people that purchase uh, their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, that get their free pound and then continue with the subscription, we're able to offer another micro loan to another family. And we recently just posted uh, something up on the Facebook wall, the family that we uh, helped, and it's uh, some people that bought a, uh, a sewing machine, and they're making shoes for their village. And I want to be able to help more people like that. So if you like coffee, Want a free pound and want to help people too? Go to coffee.freetalklive.com and get a free pound of coffee. All right. We go back to Skype where Nathan is on the line. Had to press a little button for that. But Nathan, you were talking about some uh, a pamphlet that was left in your door by Jehovah's Witnesses. That's right. And there's nothing specific about, as far as I can tell, about Jehovah's Witness beliefs in this pamphlet. It's just kind of a generic one. Yeah, those but, two uh, things you mentioned weren't weren't specific at all, certainly. Um, I actually was getting caught up in the other part of this chapter that has some nice language. It says, I am the Lord and there is no other. I form the light and create the darkness. I bring prosperity and create disaster. <laughs> I, the Lord, do all these things. Isaiah 45, verse 7. I know that one well. That's uh, Yeah, it's literally saying God creates evil. 
uh, evil and and good. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not sure how that works, but uh, I was I had two questions. You were saying something about um, why H Y the name of Yahweh in the Bible, and is that related to the uh, spelling Lord as with all capital letters, like it does in this verse? In wh in which verse in in yeah. Isaiah? Well, yeah, here and everywhere else, it, it spells. Well, uh, Jehovah Lord, Witnesses, yeah, I mean, like the word Jehovah comes from the Y H W H. And they say that it's actually Jehovah. Now we say it's actually, uh, you know, it's Yahweh, Yahweh yeah. uh, or something else. Personally, I don't think anybody knows what it actually is. It's all guesswork because there's no vowels. Um, but they, that's where Jehovah comes from. So they would use the tetragrammaton quite a bit because they consider it very important. In fact, they're doing what Mark was talking about, where they are literally calling God by God's real name. Oh, so just to be clear, the Y H Y is the same as the L O R D in yes. capital letters. Uh, yeah, that that usually when they put in the word Lord or Adonai, something like that, that is to replace Y H W H because you can't spell it. All right, I'm getting kind of <laughs> sick of Bible class. So, is there is there any final point you wanted to make, Nathan? Uh, no, just that I guess I would say this pamphlet is not that convincing. I mean, it, says, <laughs> it starts out by it starts out by saying that all Scripture is inspired of God, and then it just kind of I mean, that first part about having a harmonious central theme, that sounds pretty good. But then these other two parts about delivering the Israelis into slavery and then delivering them out of slavery, they, it seems like the two points are negating each other. So uh, I won't be filling out this pamphlet and mailing it into the address on it. Yeah, but you weren't going to do it anyway. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the call, Nathan. It, you know, it reminds me of a, not a prospect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me, just real quick, it reminds me of a Jewish, the idea of, of God having put them into captivity and taken them back out. It reminds me of a Jewish proverb from uh, the 1940s, which was from a guy, he wrote this on the wall in, uh, in a, a building in Auschwitz. And it said, uh, if there is a God, he's going to have to ask me for forgiveness. Mm. And so if God delivers people in and out of empires like that, puts them into, you know, into captivity and out of them, what a jerk. Let's go to Robert in Vermont. Hey, Robert, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Yeah, first of all, I want to say that uh, I want to apologize, Brian, for the way that Jim Witt, whatever his name is, you know, because he wouldn't apologize. Thank you. For the way he behaved. You, you, you had, you, there was no need for you to do that, but I really appreciate it. At least someone out there acts with maturity, which right. clearly James is not. Even though that I try to chat with you as much as I can on Facebook and you never respond. <laughs> <laughs> I'm terrible with that. I'm sorry. <laughs> You know, uh, you know, get, and getting into this, it, it seems like I've been a listener of Free Talk Live for probably two or three years now, and it seems that the, that the members of Free Talk Live are always constantly being belittled or shame-based or, or threatened, and I, I, I kind of wonder how you, how does that make you guys feel? I don't know. I mean, by, by whom, I guess, is what the, the question I'd have on that. I mean, it seems like most of the people who call in are kind to us. Um, you know, when you get someone who's really negative calling in, it can be a bit of a downer. Sure. I, I just don't, I, you know, I try not, to, I try to eliminate as much of that from my life as possible. Obviously, on three nights a week or three hours a night, I open up uh, the phone lines and let anybody say anything they want to me. And it, Wit is, or James is, uh, is evidence of that. Well, that bad that it was to our Dave over in New York, and there's been a couple of two or three other people that have called in and have just been, in my eyes, you know, disrespectful to, to the staff members. I mean, it's not only just that, but I mean, the Robin Hooders, and it's like, wow. Mm. And it's like it's escalating more and more and more, and it's like, wow, is this thing going to... Is it really going to explode here or what? Yeah. In Keene, I would say that this is true, that um, you know that uh, liberty activists, free Keeners, Robin Hooders, whatever term um, one wishes to use, in Keene, they probably, you know, the, these things like threats and, uh, you know, belittling and, and that sort of thing goes on much more than on Free Talk Live. I, what I wish, honestly, is that the haters in Keene would call in. I'd love to have a conversation with these people. I'm not going to go out and spend my time going to a coffee shop or even, I'm not going to spend my time even 
even inviting them to a coffee because I know they'd turn me down. But if I did, I wouldn't spend two hours at a coffee shop of my day, you know, trying to explain the ideas of liberty. But, but you have an open forum for them. Right? I, three yeah. hours a night. Here I yeah. am. If you want to, you know, talk about whatever these ideas, ideas that are belittled and, um, yeah. you know, they get on yeah. and, and well, I, and we I don't, don't ex- know. I think it's important to say, like, we don't expect anyone to respect us or like us. You know, that's not a requirement for calling in. And in fact, sometimes we oh. give more time to the people who dis- yeah. disagree with yeah, us. Yeah, it's, it's okay to disagree. I mean, admittedly, I, I don't like to quote politicians often, but I will quote Churchill in that if you have enemies, that means you stood up for something in your life. And right. I think I that know, is I guess, absolutely I true. It, I, guess was, I guess if it was me, if I was living at the, at the, you know, the key activists that are, I mean, I mean, even coming to, even to, even to there to where people are going in there, you know, taking things from the house and, and I mean, that's pretty scary. I mean, what's that? I mean, it's got to bother somebody there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. You, you <laughs> could ask Ian about that if you want next, you know, to call in tomorrow night and talk to him. Thanks, Robert, for calling in. I appreciate your support and your call tonight. Uh, we go now to Charles listening in North Dakota. Hi, Charles. You're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Oh, uh, hi. Well, I would just invite you guys to maybe try to do some more research into what you're talking about because it's obvious that you're clearly. Uh, and I don't mean, well, I'll just say it, it, you are very ignorant of what you're talking about. The Bible? Uh, the informa- yeah. Yeah. The information, I, we are not the very ignorant of the Bible, right, and this right, is a terrible way right. to start out a, off a conversation <laughs> that you want can somebody finish, to listen so, to you in. Can I finish what I was well, going to say? Would you listen to what I say? Calling somebody ignorant before you even show that you are yeah, That's um, a good way to know, not get them to listen to, to what you have to say. <laughs> I've read can the Bible I, through I, three I, times. You can't call me ignorant. Brian, how many times have you can read I, the Bible? I, I lost count. Oh, four, five, six. Can I, can I finish my statement, please? Go ahead. Yeah, tell me how ignorant I am again. Um, the, the, uh, the information that's available and out there in support of the inspiration of the Bible from God, that's, you know, actually inspired by God, is uh, as compared to the information that uh, contradicts that, is like comparing a molehill to Mount Everest, if you just take the time and look. But I think you won't, because you really don't want to know. Okay, You're well, like the people that, uh, when Christ raised Lazarus from the dead, uh, some believed in Christ, and others went and told the Pharisees. Charles, so Brian, has a, people... Brian has something he wants to say. Okay, caller. Now, I... Go ahead, Brian. Okay, I've, I am... Yeah, I didn't like being called ignorant, uh, because I'm, I'm, I used to be a very ardent... Christian. Uh, I was actually raised Jewish, and then I, I became a Christian later in life. Uh, and I am actually somewhat of a defender of the holes that exist in the theory of evolution. I am a defender in that the Bible does seem to have a somewhat coherent whole, or co- it is a coherent whole, W-H-O-L-E, okay? Um, but regardless, even if I accept it, this is what I want you to understand fr- from myself— regardless, if I, if I accepted the Bible as true, I would be a maltheist— because I can no longer, I served in the United States military. I have killed people. I no longer wish for that feeling ever again. And for me to think that there's a God that would want to do that is personally offensive. And I think that makes him sadistic. And Jesus is not a loving God. In Revelation 17, he kills billions of people. Charles, we're out of time for tonight. You can call in any night of the week. Free Talk Live is on seven nights a week. This is Free Talk Live, or has been Free Talk Live. Freetalklive.com is our website. It's been Stephanie. And Brian. And Mark. The warning signs. At first, he made me feel special. He promised he'd look after me, provide for my future. He broke every promise he made. Millions of Americans afflicted. I was ready to leave, but he told me he'd change. So I gave him another chance. I was such a fool. The consequences. Things only got worse. He started making my decisions for me about my job, my kids.